What is up guys, my name is Harry Rice and welcome back to the channel. Uh, my name is Harry Rice, I think I just said that. Uh, I'm not used to being live, I will say that admittedly. Yeah, welcome to the uh, welcome to the live recap for the Montreal Canadiens. Tonight, we played the Philadelphia Flyers and no, what you are seeing above me is not a lie. What you saw in the title is not deception. You were not hornswoggled, bamboozled, uh, hoodwinked, led astray, or run amok. The Montreal Canadiens did, in fact, score more than two goals on the Philadelphia Flyers. I know it's very crazy, ladies and gentlemen. Again, my name is Harry Rice. Welcome back to the channel. Yes, NZA, we are back to the streams. Uh, granted, I've, uh, I'm fucking tired. I'm going off like four and a half hours of sleep and I gotta be up at nine in the morning tomorrow. Um, I can't specify why exactly. I really, uh, do not uh, wish to actually. However, uh, yeah, all I'm going to say, yeah. Um, so firstly, sporty, yes, a stream in this economy. Exactly sporty. A hundred percent. Also Canuck Clay super fan 2023. Hello there, my good sir. We have a couple Canucks fans in here, actually. So you're not too out of the ordinary, surprisingly. You know what? Hey, I like the Canucks. Hope they beat the Golden Knights because I believe that looks to be the most uh, the most likely playoff series for them in the first round. Go, Canucks, go. That's what I'm going to say. Yoshi, when we did our game last Saturday, why would you make us feel bad by injuring our players? We need them to help take down Florida. No, Yoshi Bros. Florida, love. go Florida all the way. Uh, are you hoping the Florida Panthers absolutely dude fuck the toronto maple leafs when it comes to the playoffs um and yeah and yeah we're back to the streams absolutely man uh salty yeah dude that was stinky football score indeed man montreal and florida are collaborating to destroy the leafs absolutely dude sporty unironically i was gonna do a stream where i just open it up laugh for like 30 seconds end it and then start another stream for the recap but i didn't want to just Make people join, and it's like, oh, really? That's all the recap's gonna be. I it would have been funny, but you know what? I I I didn't want to be extremely arrogant. I just want to be pretty fucking arrogant tonight, boys. Um, Joe, firstly, welcome to the stream. Thank you for coming by, and absolutely, hundred percent. That is an incredible, incredible uh day so far. Uh, how shame to take us down. I'll watch carefully where you're heading. We'll definitely take. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you are. Sporty, video message to Flyers fans. All right. <laughs> You're supposed to be a part of the team. <laughs> you have Brendan Gallagher's score. Ivan Fedotov doesn't know how to use his glove. Ivan Fedotov doesn't know how to use his fucking five hole. <laughs> oh shit. Oh, it's pretty unironically. I might do that tomorrow. I actually might unironically, dude. Like, whew. yeah. Bro, I need to do that. I need to record that for sure, man. Shane Wright must have woken up. I agree, Salty. He must have, man. Oh, shit. Um, oh, hey, sons. Yeah, cooking the... Dude, we are going to cook the flyers tonight, man. We are absolutely going to. Um, Clifford, hey, how's it going, man? Absolutely big win for the boys. Uh, did you see Ovi became the first player with 18 30-goal seasons? I did not. Clifford, fucking props to Ovi. Absolutely love the motherfucker. It's only a matter of time until he beats Gretzky, dude. It's only a matter of time until we can officially acknowledge, rather than just pretend, uh, that Alex Ovechkin is the greatest goal scorer in National Hockey League history. Yeah, it's a record for Ovi. Absolutely salty. Yeah. Uh, 17, that probably had to be Wayne Gretzky, right? It had to be Gretzky. I don't think there's any other players that it probably could have been. Um, I was happy about soft scoring a Hattie, but uh, hey, NZ, I'm sorry to hear that, man. Hope the stream can boost you, uh, you mood. Yes, uh, boost you mood. No, can boost your mood. Uh, hopefully, man, we'll see about that. Uh, odd question, is your name Harris because Carey Price was goalie? Can I play Superfan? You're actually the first person to ask that. Surprisingly, no. My name, uh, my YouTube name is not a play. 
on the goaltender Carey Price. Like you said, he was a goaltender for the Canadians. My team is the Canadians. Um, but no, surprisingly, that is not a play on that name. That is actually my real name. Harry Rice is my real name. I had genuinely no clue Carey Price existed when I was born. I had no clue who he was until I was like 12 um, or like 10. Uh, one of my school teachers, actually, when I was in elementary, accidentally called me Carey Price once. And I kind of knew... I kind of knew who he was, one of the best goalies in the NHL at that point. So I was like, hey, call me Carey Price all you want. And he only did it the one time, but uh, yeah, dude. Oh, shit. Yo, it was Mike. You know what? Mike Gardner actually makes a lot of sense because Gardner was a damn good goal scorer. I think he hit 60 once and 50 like four times, I think. something. He was a pretty good goal scorer, Mike Gardner, so that actually doesn't surprise me. That, like a very underrated uh, goal scorer. The absolutely insane. This chat's a W. It'll, I'm, I'm glad it'll help you for sure, man. Flyers fans are the most insufferable sacks of shit. Their team was overplaying all season. This Klaus is not shocked. Thank God for going to go to you. <laughs> exactly, sporty dude. Exactly. Holy shit, dude. Philly fans are shocked that their team played half decent for like 80% of the year. And when it actually matters most... They fucking decide, hey, you know what? We don't need playoffs. Really? Really? Flyers fans are shocked. Like, dude, come on. Uh, Jacob, to be fair, uh, firstly, not a single power play game. That is true. You cannot say Philadelphia Maple Refs, my guy. There were like two calls on the Canadians that, uh, that could have been called. Um, there was a couple on the Flyers, sure, but there were like two obvious ones that didn't get called on the Canadians, so... The, the refs are actually, you could argue, very fair tonight. They actually did let a lot go on uh, both sides. Uh, can I play? Will I be cheering for the Canucks, Leafs, Oilers, or Jets in the playoffs? Uh, I will be cheering for the Canucks. If, uh, huh? if there is one team that has to get close to winning the Cup before the Canadians, I don't mind the Canucks. I'll cheer for the Leafs just because my best friend's a Leafs fan. I want her to be happy. The Oilers, I hate the Oilers and the Jets. We have some Jets fans on the channel. I'll be okay. It'll be okay if they end up winning, but I don't really care all that much about the Jets personally. Clip the video message. I'm going to tag Alex. I think it's that Flyers dude on the podcast. Suns, firstly, yes, you are indeed right. Also, just tag like a bunch of fucking uh, uh, Flyers Twitter dudes. Um, like I was going to say Flit Twitter, but I, that didn't. That wasn't going to work. Uh, Flitter, if you will. Tag a bunch of the Flitter guys. <laughs> let, them, uh, let them come in. Like Legit tag them and be like, Harry Rice is talking mad shit right now. Dude, like, come, like, dude, you, you, we got to get some shit talk going in here. I don't care if we're live for, like, three hours and I got to talk some shit on the Flyers for that long. Like, come on. Dude, Eric Johnson for a fourth. We ain't making the playoffs. Oh, Salty Wings? Honestly, I'll be happy. I'll be happy about that. Maybe then you'll finally get rid of Steve Eisenman and hire a legitimate GM. Uh, Carter, uh, Carter Gotzke is half loathed and half praised in Pennsylvania. Kinda, yeah. I mean, for the Flyers fans that I've talked to, he's very much, huh, he's very much loathed. But um, yeah. Jacob, I was joking. It's time to celebrate not being mad at the refs. You know what? It actually kind of is, Jacob. You know what? Because like, for the first time in, in about a month, like you can say the refs were pretty pretty good. I would say. I, I think that the two power plays the Flyers got were legit. Um, the Habs getting none. Like I think that's fine. Uh, salty, yes, indeed. The jersey was thrown on the ice. We will get into that for sure. Uh, Clifford, oh yeah, dude, I'm definitely cheering for the Canucks as well. Like, you guys are long overdue for a cup. You guys were owed to the uh, 1994. It sucks that What's-His-Face hit the post. Uh, 2011 was just a big meme. Uh, and I know you made it once before. I think it was 82 or 84, somewhere around there. Uh, yeah, just the Islanders were the Islanders. Did Torts get ejected tonight? Canuck Clay, surprisingly, no. Torts was very calm. Creepily enough, he was very calm tonight. He did not blow a gasket like we expected even there was like two two goals where he could have challenged he decided like nah just i'm not gonna challenge whatever like which is like okay uh eric johnson's been a minus 12 since joint well, okay well sporty he's eric johnson the fuck do they expect dude that means he's oh dude yeah 100 he could he he was holding you can tell he was kind of holding that anger in i was really hoping that i would get a chance to listen to the flyers press conference before I went live, um, to see what fucking Torts has to say, um, but I, I'll watch that later, I'm probably gonna watch that later, so, 
Yeah. Uh, bro, Jesse Kucherov. <laughs> Salty, bro, Jesse Kucherov in point, but okay, okay. And what did they do with Iserman? They fired him and then they won the cup. It's almost like Iserman doesn't win Stanley Cups. Maybe get rid of Gru for those smelly lineups. You know what? That's true. Maybe John Gruden should be fired. Yeah, exactly, Clifford. Yeah, 82 is swept by the Islanders. Which, to be fair, the Canucks are kind of just happy to be there at that point. They knew they were not going to be good. They were just kind of... <laughs> they were just kind of like, hey, we're happy to be here. Let's get swept. Let's do it. Uh, Canuck play. The Canadians uh, have been eliminated. They have been uh, eliminated. Uh, I think, actually, it was the Leafs game we were eliminated. All three things that needed to happen happened for us to be eliminated. The Flyers aren't mathematically out of it, but they do need to lose in. Uh, they have three games left. They're out by, I believe, two points. So they need the Capitals, Red Wings, uh, and Penguins to all lose um, the rest of their games. Um, I would say the Islanders as well, but I think the Islanders uh, can't be caught by the Flyers. I think I have the NHL standings open. I did. I can actually load them right now. I don't think the Islanders can be caught, technically. Um, maybe they can? Um... I mean, technically they can, but the Flyers, the Islanders would literally need to lose their last four games, and the Flyers need to win all three, so it's very unlikely that they can catch the Islanders. Uh, the Caps and Penguins can still, but I do think that the Flyers only having those three games, it kind of takes them out of it. But in terms of the wild card, they're only out by two points. Again, they need the Capitals, Penguins, and Red Wings to all kind of lose out, which... Yeah, so I, I honestly think if the Red Wings, Penguins, and or Caps... I think if the Caps win their next game... Basically, it's game over for the Flyers. In my opinion, I think it has to be game over after if the Capitals win their next game. So, uh, yeah. Sabres are 13 minutes away from being mathematically eliminated. Let's go, Sporty. Woo! <laughs> Let's go. Oh, Sport, uh, Salty, he left, actually. Well, still. Notice, he quit, left, got fired, whatever the case may be. They still won a cup without Steve Eiserman. And exactly like Sporty said, the Eiser plan should not take seven seasons. You guys should have been in the playoffs last year or the year before. If if this is a successful Iser plan, it should have been in the playoffs, right? You should have been in the playoffs by now. Swept by the Islanders, yes, need sons. Hey, Habs Guru. It's going great, my good sir. Thank you for coming by, man. Much appreciated. Happy to see you in here. Uh, special teams, special plays, and special players. Yes, indeed, Salty. Clifford, dude, I'm hoping that as well. I'm really hoping that uh, Ovechkin gets another playoffs. Um, yeah, dude. I Whether it's just this year or, say, next year for some reason somehow they get in, um, I'd be really happy to see uh, Ovechkin get at least one more playoffs, especially with the Capitals. Would love to see that. Um, we're actually losing out, bro. We only had one top five pick. Uh, how the fuck did we do? I mean, Salty, to be fair, you guys signed Justin Hall... And fucking Ben Sherratt. I don't get how you guys... And traded for Jeff Petrie. I don't get how you guys thought you were good defensively. And offensively, the only good move you guys did was bring in uh, Daniel Sprong and Patrick Kane. Which... Yeah, you know, one's a fourth line guy who has no defense but is genuinely amazing. Offensively. And the other guy is Daniel Sprong. So, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, I, I fucking love Daniel Sprong. If you guys have been here a long time, you guys know I kind of like Daniel Sprong. So, yeah. Also, by the way, guys, I do have a very, very quick announcement. Um, this isn't immediate. It's probably for like a month down the line once the season's out and we're kind of in the loop playoffs. I will be doing live streams in the off season for um, NHL franchise mode. I know that I've said before that I'm going to do it. I did the one in... NHL 09 or 08, whichever one it was, like five years ago, I did one episode and then I never start, I never continued it. I started one like two years ago, never continued it. I think with it being a live franchise or be a GM mode, cause I'm probably going to do it in like NHL 15. I think with it being a live franchise mode, that is going to make it a lot more interesting. And I think that's going to make something, uh, very fun that I think you guys can have fun with, uh, interaction. You guys can kind of, Oh, well, where should we go with the team? And blah, 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 blah. So yeah. Um, just wanted to tell you guys that real quick. Uh, we will be doing that during the off season. Uh, again, it's actually not fully confirmed if I want to do it in 14, 15, or if we do want to go with next gen, say maybe 18 or 20 or something like that. Um, but I do think maybe going back a couple years to try and rewrite history in a way, 
Um, and I think we could do what TBC used to do is go through the rosters and decide, hey, this player should be boosted, this player should be boosted, this player should be boosted, this player should be downgraded. Uh, I think doing that and going through maybe each uh, league and uh, and uh, maybe I off-screen create some players, I think that'd be really fun to have that going on. So, yeah. We'll see, though, uh, what happens there. I love Stevie Y because I fucking hate the tra <laughs> Okay, Sporty. Uh, I, like I love Stevie Y because I... I don't... Okay, Samuel, yes, 12 goals in this game. Genuinely nuts. Um, and Salty, yeah, never said they were good. But yeah, Sporty, I, I do agree. A lot of Detroit fans are just as insufferable as Flyers fans. They're like, well, the eyes are playing. It's a success. We're going to make playoffs. It's like, again, motherfucker, you had you have Justin Hall, Ben Sherratt, and Jeff Petrie on your bill line. How do you think that makes playoffs? Like, I get they got close. But motherfucker, it's like, they got so close because of their offense. Their goaltending is dog water. Their defense is one of the worst in the NHL. Their offense is okay. I genuinely have no clue how they are even within the playoffs at this point. They're not even if they make it. I will guarantee you guys this. They are out in five games in the in the first round. If the if the Detroit Red Wings make the playoffs, if the playoffs, I was gonna say ended like a week ago, but I don't think they were the wild card a week ago. But if they make the playoffs. Like Habs Guru said, they will not be ready to play playoff hockey. I get Ben Sherratt, Jeff Petrie, uh, uh, ironically, technically, Justin Hall. Uh, these guys have played play playoff hockey. I think Dylan Larkin maybe even got one of those last 25 years um, of the, the one of those la one of the last years of the 25 um, uh, year, uh, year streak of making the playoffs for the Red Wings. He might have gotten like the last year or two of that, I think. The Salty can probably let me know. But those guys have playoff experience, yes. The rest of the team does not. Okay, yes, Patrick Kane does, and I think Dan Sprung has a little bit. But their young guys, the guys that they're going to need to be depending on, the Mo Siders, the Lucas Raymonds, weirdly enough, the Jake Wallmans, the Philly Husos, in net, they are not ready for the playoffs. They do not have what it takes, in my opinion, to win a round. You know? <laughs> yes, I'll do exactly. Uh, we signed Hall, Petrie, and Shiroff for defensive depth. Exactly, dude. Also, uh, you, uh, yeah, you didn't sign Jeff Petrie. You traded for him. You got rid of Gustav Lindstrom and a fourth round pick, which is still somehow an overpayment to the fucking Canadians for that. Um, but yeah. Also, NZA, dude. I've been saying that for five, four or five years now. Hab should sign Daniel Sprong. Genuinely, this is a guy who's like perfect for a third, fourth line role and l literally power play one minutes. Daniel Sprung is, like, top three, I think, in the league, or top five, in, like, points per 60 minutes, or goals per 60 minutes. Seriously, Daniel Sprung is phenomenal. I love Daniel Sprung. It sucks that if he worked on his defense uh, to be half decent, they would probably, he'd probably be at least a second-line guy. Genuinely. Like, I love Daniel Sprung. I think he's phenomenal. He's a great player. Clifford, yeah, McDavid gets hurt with the 99 assists on the year. He could be the first player since Gretzky to hit 100. Eh, too bad. Who cares if he doesn't? Um, who would have thunk the Lions were the only team in Detroit to do shit? Salty? That... Preach it, my brother. Preach it. Oh, my brother. Shout out Devon Dudley. Uh, if Detroit makes the playoffs, they won't be ready to play playoff hockey. Exactly, Habs. Exactly, Sporty as well. They, they act like adding Patrick Kane makes him a Sudden Cup contender. And I love... I love Patrick Kane. He's a great addition. He does not make them a cup contender. He gives them a lot of cup experience, yes. But he doesn't make that team a cup contender. They needed at least one more top six winger. They need at least a third line center. Actual offensive depth aside from Daniel Sprong. They need to get rid of Ben Schrott and Justin Hall and add an actual defensive defenseman. Um, and then goaltending, they need a fucking starting goaltender. The Red Wings are not at all ready for playoff hockey. And if they get in next year, it's because they're able to trade away the awful uh, Justin Hall and Ben Chirac contracts. And uh, they're able... And they end up... Um, and they end up getting a good goaltender as a result. Which, I don't know if there's going to be any in free agency. I feel like I remember seeing there's like two okay ones. But, yeah. I don't know. We'll see though. Um, Alright, where am I? Uh... Yeah, uh, the last time the Wings made the playoffs, they still had Datsuk and Zetterberg. Oof. 
I'm burning the jersey if we draft a defenseman unless it's, unless it's Alphonse Freeze. Who the fuck? <laughs> Alphonse Freeze. Who is this dude? I'll be very surprised if he is not. Okay, he's Swedish. You know what? That makes a ton of sense. Um, You know what? This dude's projected late first round. Unironically, why could I see the Canadians using the Jets draft pick, on, draft pick on him? I hope we don't, but yeah. Um, where am I? Uh, boogie, 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 boo, 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 uh, boo, Sprong will be an Islander, and then Sprong screams a Tampa signing. Sporty and Sons, you know what, I can't, kind of? I mean, Sprong, I think being an Islander would be fun. The only issue is he'd be ruined. And Sprong being a Tampa signing, that would make sense, because he has pure offense. They need a guy for second, third line roll minutes. Um... Yeah, honestly, I, I, I love that. Um, I, I actually would like that if Tampa signed Sprong. Not because I want him to go to Tampa, uh, but I'd like the signing. I think it'd be a very smart signing for the Tampa Bay Lightning. It'd be a smart signing for any team who signs him. As long as they don't expect, you know, top-line minutes, uh, you know, 1,000% effort on every play, I think that's completely fair. You know, I think if you're expecting... Second, third line minutes, good offense, not much of a defensive play. I think you'd be completely fine. I think if you stuck Sprong on a line with, say, Evans and then Wah, you'd fucking have Sprong scoring 50 points. I think you'd have a great 50, 60 point guy. Evans could cover the defensive ability, so can Wah, while also being good offensively. I'd have no issues if that was the Canadiens' third line next year, or even the fourth line, potentially, which I don't think Wah is on the fourth line next year, but... If that was the third line, I'd love that, actually, in Montreal. And th like you said, Enzia, yes, yeah, Sprung is from Montreal, so he would be a hometown kid as well, for sure, man. Um, with McDavid Hurt, Kucherov's the only one who can get to 100 assists as he's at 96. Thank you, Darkness. Um, cup contender, what? I mean, to be fair, Salty, Wings fans are acting like the fucking Red Wings are in the middle of the goddamn dynasty now. Is Patrick Kane trying to play for all original six teams? He might be. Uh, Chicago, the Rangers, the Wings down so far. Uh, the Leafs, I think, could sign him next year if he wants to sign cheap on a one-year. Montreal in two years might be good. Uh, the Leafs are out of it next year. He might end up getting traded to Boston, um, which is not going to happen, let's be honest. But, I mean, it could happen. Patrick Kane's, what, 34, 35? Someone can correct me. He's 35 years old. He might have three more years left in him if he wants to sign one year with each team. I mean, dude is point per game, 20 goals. 44 uh, points in 46 games. He's played fairly well, I think, uh, with the Red Wings uh, this year. Wouldn't surprise me at all to see him... Um, wouldn't surprise me. Uh, wouldn't surprise me to see them... Uh, 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 to see a team sign Patrick Kane because he is still pretty damn good. It wouldn't surprise me to see him get one year of uh, 5 mil, honestly, in the market. We have all that in the NHL, NCAA, and the SHL. We have all that in the... Oh, I'm on top chat. What the fuck? Okay, what the hell? Why am I on top chat? Um. Oh, you have all that. I think you mean... Okay, I think I know what you mean. You have all the defensemen. Um. I mean, yeah, sure you do, uh, Salty. Uh, you, I just need to focus on drafting actual offense. Red Wings Twitter thinks Alex Lyon will be... Hey, to be fair, sporty. Alex Lyon was fucking great with the Panthers. It turns out, though... You put him on a team with zero uh, actual good play, and he can't carry the team. Wow, who would have thought? Exactly, Clifford. McDavid could only miss one game, but yeah, I'd... Fuck Kucherov, he dirty Russian fuck. I'd rather McDavid, honestly. It's the lesser of two evils, honestly. Hey, man, Mike, how's it going, man? Yes, bad game for all the local teams. Uh, Devils did get embarrassed by the Maple Leafs, which, to be fair, what else is new? Uh, are you a Flyers fan, my guy? Are you a Flyers fan, uh, Mad Mike? Secondary? Harry, and NBC Sports are doing the GM playoffs. Oh, okay, I'll vote. <laughs> I'll vote. Alright, we're doing the uh the NBC. If we're doing the uh uh where am I? Alright, the NBC Sports. Who wins? What the fuck? <laughs> uh you know what? Yeah, I gotta say this. And who wins? Oh god, lesser of two evils. All right, Harry, it wasn't a bad night for all the local teams. That is true. The Islanders and the Canadians did both win. Uh, and you know what? It was also a good night because the Sabres lost. So, 
There's always that being a W. Um, yeah, he'd be... <laughs> Shut up, Suds. Honestly, from Tampa, Sprung is my second option if we can't sign Duclair. That is true, Darkness. I mean, depends on what Duclair wants. If he's looking, you know, because Duclair for the past, like, five years, it feels like he's been on fucking prove-it deals. It feels like Dan uh, Anthony Duclair... Well, actually, to be fair, he did get a, a good payday in Florida, but it feels like that last year in Ottawa was like, hey, you know, I'm going to show you guys what I can do. It feels like that that one year in Florida before he got paid, it was like, hey, let me show you what I can do. Um, and then he got that big extension, and then, you know, he played great that, that year. He had 30, 30 goals and nearly 60 points. Uh, and then last year, he just couldn't stay healthy. He played a great playoff run and then got traded to the Sharks. We're considering the Sharks... Played very well and then got traded to Tampa. He's playing well. It wouldn't surprise me to see Daniel's uh, Anthony Duclair look for maybe four or five mil on the open market as well. Just because he is looking, I think, half decent. I think he could end up being um, a good second-line option for a team. And I think that they could look at that. So, uh, yeah. I, it wouldn't surprise me to see uh, Tampa, if they can't resign Spr uh, Duclair, go for Sprung. That would be actually pretty good. Hell, if you can resign Duclair and then Sprung only wants, say, one and a half mil, for example, I think you can get both, actually, if you're Tampa. It depends if Sprung looks at his offense from this year and says, hey, look, I want to bet on myself taking that next step. I know I think it's, I think he's, like, 28. I think they can do that, though, for sure. Sons, I feel at this point you should hope the Isles miss the playoffs for the sole reason there's a chance things might change and make the playoffs. It'll be the same shit next year. That is true, Sporty. It sounds with, I don't care. You know what? That's fair. You know what they need? Mitch Kopp, Fazio. Yeah, I think they might need, uh, they might need Mitch Kopp, man. Lion is getting crucified each night. Oof, salty. Um, someone I've known since grade one is a Flyers fan, and I've actually really hit it off with a Flyers, Flyers cheerleader. Oh, shit. Mad Mike getting some coochie. Let's go, Mad Mike. Mad Mike getting some coochie. Let's go, baby. Fred's clinched. We are losing 630 away from elimination. Oof, sporty. Uh, did the Predators clinch, though? Holy shit. Dude, remember when we all said at the beginning of the year the fly the uh, the Predators were not going to be a playoff team? Uh, well, yeah, they just clinched. Dude, that feeling... <laughs> Dude, that feeling when the, when the first wild card is clinched before the third spot in the Pacific. That's really funny. That's actually pretty funny. Um... Yeah, so it's looking like, by the way, if the Golden Knights win their next game, that I believe they officially do eliminate the St. Louis Blues, which, I mean, eh, too bad. Eh, who cares? Let's pretend, but we're sad the Blues are eliminated. But, uh, yeah, I, I mean, to be honest, I would have been happy if the Wild were the team that took out the Golden Knights because I think that would have been a really funny matchup with the Dallas Stars. Um, but, yeah, we will see, though. Harold, he Harold Rice out of the... My fucking name is not Harold... You plebeian. Check general. What did NHL app mean by this? All right, give me a second. In 10 minutes, I'll reveal the... All right, let's go, boys. Um, Capitals edge Red Wings. Move into wild card. The Capitals edge the Red Wings. They they took out the Red Wings narrowly. That's what they mean, man. That's what they mean, my guy. That's that's what they mean. That's nothing. <laughs> There's a solid chance whoever gets wild card two wouldn't even be first out in the West. I mean, yeah, kind of, man. Kind of. Uh, damn, Michael Nebbia using the government name. Uh, only reason he goes total dance center. Man, Mike, fuck you. Um, all right, let's get into the uh, Canadians game. We're about half an hour in. We've uh, we had a good amount of blabbering. I think we should start. Uh, mine might be fucked. Fazio, uh, no. Nah. I, I know what you were going for, man. I get it, but like... Yeah. Wildcard 2 in the East is at 85. St. Louis is at 87, and I'm in pain. Damn, Darkness sucks to be a Western Conference team. Oof. Uh, all right, so yeah, in case you guys are new here, how we do this usually is we go through the lines for both teams, give them a little game summary recap and analysis. I do the stats for the Canadians, and then we get on out of here. All the while, I read your chat comments. Uh, if you are new, you want to post something in the chat for me to read, do so, such as Fazio. Cruz is a very funny guy. Uh, Fazio, it must be opposite day, or uh, tell a lie day. Good news about missing RVS playoffs is that I don't have to sweat in the uh, playoffs. Still got the Evs. That is very true, uh, Salty. That is very true. Um, the Wings making the playoffs is probably would probably be the worst thing to happen to the NHL uh, since the Wings coming into the NHL. Let's be honest. Um, but yeah, the Avs, honestly, it's funny that two of your teams, I hate the Red Wings and I really like the Avalanche. And I, I, I honestly hope the Avs win 
Because honestly, it'll, I'd love to see Jonathan Duran lift the Stanley Cup. I'd love to have Jonathan Duran lift that cup and be like, yo, motherfuckers, he was not the issue with the Canadians. Suck. You know, you know I'm going to go Paul Heyman, full Paul Heyman for a second. I was going to pull out a leather jacket, but I don't think I got one. Or I do, but I, I don't think I, I have it out at all right now. Fuck. I, I don't have a leather hat either, so I can't do full Paul Heyman. But I'm going to say, quote, <clears throat> if you think Jonathan Duran was the problem on the Montreal Canadiens last year, you can suck my fucking dick. Thank you, Paul Heyman. But yeah, uh, dog, that was almost 100 years ago. Too bad Moose is out. Oof, salty. Uh, and also, yeah, um, I mean, to be fair, yeah. Schneider's just 500 miles of bad road, sporty. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I don't know. He did give us iCarly. You say he touched those kids? I don't know. I don't know if there's enough conclusive evidence in my playbook. I don't know if there's... I don't know. I don't know, man. David Schneider from the Jays, that is true. He did He did give us... He did give us iCarly and Drake and Josh, so I don't know. Seems like a... <laughs> seems like a... <laughs> Seems like a fair tra trade off to me, boys. God fucking damn. No, but seriously though, fuck Dan Schneider. For real though, fuck Dan Schneider. He's a piece of shit. Um, but yeah. Um, all right. Yeah. So uh, wait, no, I don't want to open Chrome. I gotta go to Streamlabs. There we go. But no, legitimately though, seriously. Um, yeah, fuck Dan Schneider. But uh, that's like saying Kanye will graduation, bro. Kanye will graduation. He can't be. He can't be. I was, I was going to say Jew-phobic. That's not what it's called. Anti-Semitic. He can't be anti-Semitic. He wrote graduation. No, but seriously. Um, yeah, David Schneider from the Jays, exactly. Hey, Harry, great hammer impression. Thank you, Randy. Appreciate it. I did... Uh, I tried my best to watch both nights of WrestleMania. Um, of course, the Habs were playing during both nights, so I didn't get to watch a whole lot. Uh, however, when I watched, it was very solid. I thankfully was able to watch the main event between... Uh, I was able to watch the main event on both nights. Uh, the Zayn match, from what I recall, was pretty decent. Um, yeah, I thought Roman, Rock, Cody, Seth was pretty solid. I thought it was a really, really fun main event for night one. I think that Drew and Seth, from what I saw, was pretty entertaining. I think uh, the Priest cash-in was also pretty cool. The main event uh, of night two was beautiful. It was absolutely beautiful. I think it was one of the greatest main events in WrestleMania history. It was one of the best matches I've ever seen personally. Uh, the amount of overbooking, I think, added to it. Uh, like Darkness said, the main event was absolute cinema, which is weird that he said that, considering Darkness apparently doesn't watch wrestling, unless I'm confusing him with someone else. But yeah, the main event on night two was, was fantastic. It was absolutely uh, just mind-blowing. I loved it. Uh, and uh, I, I really, really hope that Mania 41 can be relatively... Can be half the Mania that this Mania was. And that I have um, half the brain that you do. Or something like that. But yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I did my best to watch WrestleMania. I did watch the Raw after Mania last night. It's pretty good. I fell asleep during some parts of it, especially that Jade Cargill match, but uh, it was pretty all right. I thought it was a decent mania. First hour, uh, first uh, decent Raw after mania. First hour was pretty good, especially because it was commercial free. After that, though, it was like, it was still good. I think the uh, the Cena, R-Truth, Miz thing, that was really fun. And uh, yeah, the rest of it, it was fun, though. Um, I swear if I beat Oakley in the GM playoffs, Oakley's going to come and say, oof, Mad Mike, <laughs> oof. Um... Hey, no, Randy, believe me, I can't blame you at all for watching Mania over the Habs games. For me, obviously, I have to do the recaps, so I kind of have to. <laughs> I kind of have to watch uh, the games rather than WrestleMania. I really wanted to watch Mania, but yeah, I had to watch the games. I did have it open in on Chrome, so when I came down to take the notes, I was watching at the same time. And uh, yeah, obviously, during the intermissions, I had watched, so I got to watch some of it. And yeah, Suns, for, for your first Mania, you caught... Arguably a top three mania of all time, which I think is phenomenal. I don't watch it often, but I do. Hey, there we go, Darkness. The Jade match was 10 seconds. Uh, was like 10 seconds. How did you fall asleep? Sons, genuinely, dude. I, I like Chelsea Green. Um, Because I, I, I looked up a little bit about her after the match last night. Because I was like, who the fuck's Chelsea Green? I like her gimmick. I think it's kind of funny. But, um, yeah, dude. I just, I just, it was like, yeah. Uh, do you think the playoffs would be the most wide open in a while? Salty? Yeah, I kind of think so. 
especially if like a team like the Golden Knights are the second wild card and they do beat the Canucks. Even though I do think that will be heavily like, okay, well that was to probably to be expected. I still think that you're going to get a lot. Um, it, you get a lot of potential upsets. I think that this year's, um, I guess you could say quote unquote market, but I think this year's playoff matchups will be extremely, extremely tough. I think that all 16 teams that make, 14 of the 16 teams that make it in will be damn good. And I think that a lot of them, uh, have a massive, a uh, big chance of winning the Stanley cup. Uh, I think it's going to be, uh, I'd say most of them, just because there's a couple teams where it's, you kind of know they're not going to win, you know, Toronto, Boston, uh, the Islanders. <laughs> no, but seriously. Um, seriously though. Um, uh, yeah, I, for me, I think that with the, with the playoffs this year, they're going to be wide open, uh, for sure. Salty. I think that you look at the competition I think that this year, especially with the the uh, the um, the trade deadline being a buyer's market, I don't know how much that has to do with it, but I think that that's a little bit of a telling sign that teams are a bit more competitive. You know, teams know that they have a chance to win, and I think that a lot of teams are going to be really, really pressing more than usual. I think, I think it's no matter what, if it ends up being wide open or if it ends up being a lot of the top seeds, no matter what. It's going to be a damn good playoffs. It's going to be a damn good playoffs. And I'm going to try and watch as much as I can. Uh, Harry, is Sammy Zane good? Apparently he's from Montreal. Yes, he is. He's literally from the heart of Montreal, Quebec. Uh, Kevin Owens is also from Quebec as well. I, uh, unfortunately, he didn't win because that fucking piece of shit, I Show Speed, had to show up in Mania and ruin that goddamn match. But uh, yeah, Sammy Zayn is damn good. I love Sammy Zayn. He's probably my favorite uh, wrestler in the WWE right now. Absolutely love him. Very happy he ended Gunther's 666 day reign as inner uh, as a Intercontinental Champion. Proud of him. And also, I want to try this again because I don't know if it still works or not. But guys, if you guys are enjoying the content so far, the little rambling session we're having before the game, hit the like, subscribe button. Hit the subscribe button. Don't forget to hit that like. I don't know if it still does that flashy rainbow shit, but hopefully it does. And, uh... Yeah, hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, hope you guys are enjoying the stream so far, I should say. And Salty, yeah, dude. I have no clue who's going to make the finals. I still think it could be, uh, or quote-unquote should be, Abs and Panthers. I think it would be a phenomenal finals. But yeah, no. it's it, like When I do the predictions, whenever that, that NHL playoff bracket comes out, I'm going to have a tough time predicting it. Like, legit, I'm going to need like three or four guys to come on a video with me. Not in that way, you fucking pervs. Uh, to fucking talk this through or some shit. Harry, do you do if he doesn't the live streams because the Habs losing? No, Randy, it was because of WrestleMania, actually. I wanted to... Funny enough, actually, on the Saturday, I was watching the video package and the entrances while I was doing the recap. Sunday, I did it late because I wanted to watch the Mania main event, and I was worried that I wasn't going to be able to... Uh, I was going to miss the start of it if I did the recap, which I probably would have missed the first minute, which I did not want to, so... Yeah, I did the recaps uh, in video form, not because of the Habs losing, but because of WrestleMania. So, yeah, we are probably back to doing live streams through the, for the majority of the, for the rest of the season, unless I am extremely tired and I just want to get it out in 15, 20 minutes because uh, I got to go go to bed, which I'm gonna have to probably around one o'clock because I, like I said, I got to be up at 9 a.m. tonight or tomorrow morning. So, yeah, um, Dallas and Rangers are early favorites. Yeah, you, you can say that, Randy. I think I think they probably would be considered that for sure. Um, Dallas is the best third line in the league. Oof, salty. Uh, yeah, I think you can say that for sure. What what is that third? I know Duchesne's on that line. Who the fuck? Who the fuck else is on that third line? New pulls out. Oh shit, let's go, bro. Sammy should not have beaten Gunther. What the fuck? Sons, one hundred percent. He should have, man. He was built as the underdog. The underdog's got to do what underdog's got to do. This collapse is legendary. Mr. Venus, what, who are we uh, talking about? Which collapse exactly? We're talking about the Flyers collapse? Because, hell yeah. Uh, Dallas, New York Rangers would be nutty. Yes, it would be salty. That would probably be the worst. Um, that would probably be the worst cup final that I can imagine. Just because I hate the Stars. Well, not I hate the Stars, but meh, the Stars. And then I hate the Rangers. Because Nikki is a goddamn Rangers fan. <laughs> salty, yeah. Special guest. I might get some. What I might do is I might do a video for my predictions and then just overall like let 
guys come in. Maybe we'll do a live stream and let guys come in. Like Luca, if you want a salty, Suns, maybe Sporty, let you guys come in and do uh, playoff brackets. I think that'd be fun. Me, 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 I love coming with you. <laughs> Suns, no. Please, no. Mr. Bean, firstly, yeah, I, I'm glad you agree. Mania 40 was pretty damn good. Okay, I'm, I, I, just, I just pulled my... Uh, my notes away because I'm covering the profile pictures. Yeah, I can see you're a Flyers fan. That makes a lot of sense, my guy. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. My condolences if you're a Ranger, if you're a Flyers fan, or if you're a Rangers fan as well. That my condolences to you as well. Johnston and Stankoven. Yeah, salty. That is a damn good third line. I will say that. That absolutely, man. But Mr. Beanus, yeah, Mania Forty was was phenomenal, dude. It was, it, it was in my opinion probably a top five Mania from what I've seen. I've seen some other stuff aside from the. Um, I've seen some stuff other than uh, what I saw when it was live. It was really good. It was really, really fun. Love that mania. Don Granada just called a timeout with 0.2 seconds left. Yeah, his job's done. His job's done, sporty. <laughs> Rangers are frauds. Trust? Oh, 100% they are, sons. Uh, eliminated. We we survived longer than the devils do. Absolutely, sporty. You guys did. And you know what? Hang that in the goddamn rafters. We survived longer than the devils in the 23-24 season. Should have been beaten by Chad Gable. Oh, God, no, sons, dude. Sweet! Like, f f I hate Chad Gable. Genuinely. It, which is really funny. Everybody wanted Chad Gable. And I fucking hate Chad Gable. I don't know what it is about him. Ever since American Alpha split up, Chad Gable has just been one of the worst, in my opinion. He's a great, he's a great performer. He's a great wrestler. As a talent. As a, as a WWE superstar... He, I hate his personality. As a wrestler, as a pro wrestler, he's fucking great. Character, I hate it. Shorty G, and it's just like... Ugh. God, I, I just don't like it. Darkness, welcome back, my good sir. Uh, fuck, maybe I can... Maybe, can I slide? Oh, Salty, 100%, my guy. 100%, we'll, we'll do that, like I said, when that NHL bracket challenge thing comes out. We'll do that, 100%, man. Absolutely. Absolutely. We'll do that, for sure. Uh, you guys lost first... Randy, absolutely, dude. Sammy rules, 100%, man. Uh, on God, one of the best WWE shows I've ever seen. Exactly, Mr. Beanus, dude. I, dude, honestly, like, if I ever get a chance to get the WWE Network, or actually, because the, because uh, WWE's going to Netflix next year, if they get, like, if they get basically the WWE Network where it's everything from WWE goes on, uh, goes on Netflix, bro, I'm going to watch every Mania, and I'm going to rank them. I will rank them. In honor, I technically should have done that. Should have tried to do that this year, cause 40th anniversary. But next year's the actual 40th anniversary. Because again, quick side tangent before we get into the game, WrestleMania 25 was not the 25th anniversary. It was the 24th. It was the. It was just the 25th time WrestleMania was done. The actual 25th anniversary would have been 26, cause that would have been the 25th anniversary. From when WrestleMania 1 happened, you don't count the first time it happens as the first anniversary. You count the next year as the first anniversary. I, I Brian Zane pointed that out, and I, I, I don't like that ever since. So in a way, I kind of hate that. <laughs> but yeah, next year I'll do it for the 40th anniversary of WrestleMania. So maybe I'll do that. I uh, hope. You guys might have to remind me come like November, January, whenever the hell it comes out. I think it's supposed to come out like January on Netflix, but I don't know. We'll see. But yeah. Um, y'all are trash anyway. Should have never fired Lindy. That is very true, sporty. Sammy with the bloodline was crazy good, Randy. Dude, that whole storyline of just Roman and then turning into the bloodline and then Sammy joins and then Sammy betrays and Sammy gets the title shot of Mania and then the Cody stuff and then Sammy. The only thing I will say that I think would have been even better about the main event on Mania 40 is if you had a full out fucking schmoz. In that last 10 minutes. You get everybody that was in there. But you get Sammy and Owen out there to battle with two guys. Of course we all would love to see Austin out there. It's unfortunate that either the pay wasn't good enough. Hopefully not Austin's too loyal to Vince. Maybe he just didn't want to do it. You know maybe he felt. Maybe he felt you know Cody. Uh, Cody didn't need Austin out there. To, you know didn't want to take the spotlight off him. Which completely fair. Um, you know I would have liked that to happen. But you know what. I love what we got instead. I'm completely fine with that. I thought Granado was going to take the Sabres over the hump. Oof. Like like Sporty said, yeah, you guys want Lindy back bad. Hopefully that happens this offseason. Gable would have been a better champion. Maybe Suns, but I do think that with the story that they're telling with Sami Zayn finally being able to win 
the big one, I, I think that it tells a better story overall. Lindy was not the right voice for the young roster. Who we have now isn't right either. Devil should have kept Brunette. Of course they should have, my guy. 100% they should have, Mad Mike. Um, I'm trying to see, uh, Mr. Beanus, because you say you just subscribed. Firstly, thank you, Mr. Beanus, for the subscription. I'm trying to see if the thing popped up for the, uh, for the, uh, subscription notification. I don't know if you have that enabled or not. I apologize if it didn't. I actually don't have my ears in. I don't have my AirPods in to hear the notifications. So, uh, if you didn't, uh, if it, if you don't have them on, either way, thank you very much. And if you did, uh, Saul Goodman, thank you for the subscription. Mr. Beanus, I appreciate that. Um... I'm trying to find where I am now. Also, yeah, in a way, bad, in a, in a way, Mad uh, Mad Mike should have kept Brunette definitely, but at the same time, Lindy I think was leading them in a good direction. I do like what Lindy can do for a young roster, and I really like what Lindy Ruff can do to teach a team about discipline and to be able to help them into the playoffs, especially with the amount of experience that the guy has. I think that it was a mistake for them to uh, get rid of him for sure, man. I, I think it was absolutely. Perhaps I can slide and get my predictions for the NHL bracket. Oh, absolutely, man, Mike. We'd love to have you guys. Like, I do think that we want to try and slide. Not slide, but I think we want to try and have maybe like Suns and Sporty, for example. I don't know if they want to, but I think having uh, Sporty and, and Suns potentially throughout the whole stream and then get others coming in, like maybe Luca and, and you know, Salty and you, Mad Mike, have you guys come in for those segments. And then I think having that would be really, really fun to um, to go with that. Um, bro, Lindy, Matt, forget exactly salty, dude. Uh, night two was pretty much perfect. Drew and Rollins was a great opener. Yes, it was fast paced, exciting, had a great ending. Exactly. Mr. Venus. Plus it sets up the future stories of Rollins pro hopefully taking some time off. Cause the dude did not look good on night two, not in a bad way. Like he was a bad wrestler, but just, he looks fucked. <laughs> he looks like he's fucking, he needs some time off and Hopefully he gets that. Also, yeah, Suns, my apologies. I forgot to vote on the last polls. I got to, um, I got to, uh, I got to vote on these. The Canucks GM, I forgot his name. Oof. That's pretty funny. Um. <laughs> Wolfie. Suns, why'd you call him Wolfie in the fucking polls? I just realized that. But yeah, sets up the stories, like I said, with Seth hopefully taking time off for himself. Uh, it sets up Drew and Punk. You get Priest doing whatever the hell he's going to be doing as champion until clash at the castle. I think it's setting things up pretty, pretty damn well. And I love that. It's funny. You can tell if this were a Vince thing, punk would have been the special ref. He would have gotten involved in the finish. Um, not after the match, you know, he would have been, you know, he would have been, you know, in there. Fuck Drew might not have actually even been in the world. Title. I don't know. Cause Vince, I feel like, did really like Drew for a couple years there, so... Might have still gotten that chance, but uh, either way, I can agree uh, more. Uh, fast pace, exciting, great ending, uh, and then with the cash-in, after Drew kind of costs himself that uh, that opportunity with uh, with him getting in Punk's face, I love that, honestly. And uh, like you said, it sets it up uh, pretty damn well. I'm excited to see that, hopefully, at Backlash. It seems Punk might be back sooner than we think. Hopefully, but if not... I'm excited for the build up to hopefully SummerSlam because I think that'll be a damn good match. Lindy wasn't the right voice. The fuck did he do last year? Is it Lindy's fault that they had no defense or goaltending? The fact that Fritzy did nothing to help the young court. That is true, uh, Sporty. Schmaz. Randy, basically just get everybody in there. Basically just kind of a brawl, more or less. Uh, the Habs future is very exciting. We definitely improved this season. Yes, indeed, Wolverine. We 100% have. And keep in mind... This is without Ryan, uh, Reinbacher. I was going to say Reinson. This is without Reinbacher. This is without Hudson. This is without Sean Farrell. This is without Ivan Demidoff. This is without some of... This is without a top six winger. Most of our young depth. And two... Our literal two future top line defensemen. And this is without fucking Jacob Fowler as well. This is without our future Carey Price 5.0. You know? Like, holy shit. <laughs> we are going to be a cr incredible in the next three years. I'm a little skeptical of Brunette in the playoffs, but the Preds' defense looks good. Yes, Alti. I, I, I think that there is a little bit of a reason to be a little bit skeptical. But yeah, the Preds' defense does look solid. I think they'll, they'll be able to take it to whoever they end up facing, which I think... I think is the Canucks right now. Because I think the Stars have the lead. So I think it would be Stars... I think it would be Canucks and Preds right now, I think. Despite the collapse, we have first round picks for the next two drafts. Mr. Venus, exactly. Like, despite the collapse, you still have a chance. Because you're out of the playoffs, you do technically have a chance to win the draft lottery. You do technically have that chance, which 
Yeah. Salty Wings, Lindy, I have no clue how Lindy is. Let me look that up real quick. Also, my mouth is dry as hell. I really wish I got some to drink before the stream. Lindy Ruff is 64 years old. God damn. Um, excited to see Punk and Drew. Mr. Venus, uh, me too. Me too. I'm a Damien Mark. Ah, damn, let's go. Bisexual Undertaker fan in the chat. I was very happy when he cashed in. Oh, Suns, 100%, man. I could not. Couldn't blame you whatsoever. I like Damien, dude. Come on. Firstly, how can you not like Mommy? Secondly... How can you not like Judgment Day? Thirdly, how can you not hate Dom Dominic Mysterio? Bro, dude genuinely has go away heat and I love it. I found a little bit of water, but that's all I've got. I'm caught in the trap. I can't walk out. Yeah. All right. I don't know. I didn't know how to spell his name. Uh, Alvin? Alvin? Alvin and the Chipmunks? Bro, you should have seen me, though, when R-Truth won. I genuinely not celebrated my TV like that since the Isles run. So, dude, Suns, what did you think last night when fucking R-Truth came in with the uh, with the Judgment Day, dude? What would you think of that? I thought that segment was gold. I thought that was phenomenal, dude. R-Truth, dude, R-Truth, unironically, if he was, if he beat Damian Priest, um, if he beat Damian Priest for the WWE title, I would not be mad. I would fucking love that. Honestly, like, I'd have no issue if if R-Truth won Money in the Bank and cashed in on either Drew or Priest or whoever. I would genuinely love that. R-Truth deserves a run. Even if it's just for he cashes in on Money in the Bank and he loses it the next day. He just, he deserves a, a run with the WWE title. The dude is, like, 50. And before he retires, he needs at least one world title run. He is, our truth is 52 years old. And this motherfucker looks 30, if that. Like, you know when they say black don't crack? It is true with our truth, bro. Like, I get, dude looks phenomenal for 52. Like, you could tell me the dude is 23 and I'd be like, yeah, I believe you. Genuinely nuts. Genuinely insane. Um, and also, yeah, dude, unfortunately I didn't see R-Truth and actually technically I did see R-Truth win cause I did see him get the pin at WrestleMania in the ladder match. I did see that and I was marking out for that. Unfortunately, I didn't get to see him and Miz take down the tag titles, but I'm sure the crowd was, the crowd in Philly was loving R-Truth. R-Truth is my man as well, sons. He is a boy of Harry Rice. Uh, I thought he was older. Salty, you know, I kind of thought that, that, that Lindy was a little bit older as well. I used to watch WWE all the time through the attitude era. My notification is Kane's entrance music to this day. I haven't fallen in a while. It seems it's up. It seems like it's up and down. Yeah, Habs Guru, that is true. Like I, the Vince stuff definitely kind of hampered it a bit, but especially with Mania recently and them entering a new era with what's appearing to be phenomenal wrestling. Triple H embracing stuff that Vince McMahon didn't want to, such as actually calling them professional wrestlers, not shying away from using the words professional wrestling. Like, like Mr. Bina said, Triple H is saving WWE, genuinely. Like, it's not like AEW is really much of a threat, but he is taking that company from being like, oh yeah, WWE, yeah, they're pretty good, to you cannot miss WWE. You need to watch it whenever you can. Like, he is saving this company from where it's been the last decade, which is funny because I loved 2012 through like 2017 WWE because that's when I became a fan. I became a fan 2012, watched for about six years, and I was like, eh. Yeah, this is kind of getting bad. But, like, looking back, like, especially from what I've seen in the last, like, two years with the Zayn and Knoxville match and Mania 40 and just the stuff since Triple H has taken over, I don't know how I liked that stuff. You know, genuinely. I don't know how I liked WWE. To be fair, 2012 was, like, pretty all right. I feel like 2014 was solid overall. But just, I don't know how I liked that era of WWE. Like, it was just, like... Not that good compared to what we're getting right now, guys, which is, I love it. By the way, Habs Guru, which Kane's theme? Are we talking, like, OG Kane? We talking Slow Chemical? You know, which uh, which entrance theme are we talking about? Are we getting the weird one that's in between that I actually really like? Which Archer, which uh, which Kane theme are we talking exactly? Sun's exactly, dude. Whenever R-Truth comes on my screen, I'm like, hey, R-Truth, let's go, man. Hell yeah. Exactly, Sun's, dude. R-Truth cashes in and wins. I, I would get naked as well, man. Exactly, Mr. Beanus. AEW had potential. Poor, poor business and backstage politi politics killed it. I think the biggest red herring, firstly, 
Tony Khan is trying to be a friend instead of a boss first. Secondly, like you said, they lost their two biggest stars in Cody and Punk. They lost Cody because he just kind of fucking lost out. He just kind of didn't really want to be an executive. I think he's even admitted that he was too immature to be an executive, which I think actually ironically shows maturity (laughs) in Cody. And he wanted to go back to WWE. He knew that Triple H could treat him well. And with Punk, dude, when... When your company makes WWE, makes you want to go back to WWE after you fucking could not stand them for a decade, you're doing something wrong. I will say this, and I will stand by this. If AEW does not exist, you are not seeing CM Punk in the WWE ring right now. I do think it does eventually happen. I think it's another two, three years. Um, But like, if AEW does not exist, you are not seeing CM Punk on your TV screens in WWE right now. You are not seeing that. Exactly, Mr. Venus. Tony Khan is a fan with a lot of money. And it shows. Dude hires, what, like half his roster, more than half his roster, is all former WWE guys. Chris Jericho was there. Uh, Dean Ambrose, I'm not calling him John Moxley. He's Dean Ambrose. He's forever the goofy guy with a fern. That's all he's known as. Hey, NZA, you're peace now, man. Thank you for coming by, man. Much appreciated. You know, half his roster is former WWE guys. Punk, Cody Rhodes, Jake Roberts was there for a while. Ric Flair, I think, made a couple appearances. Arn Anderson, Sting. The only two stars that AEW made were MJF and Orange Cassidy. One of them has been rumored to go to WWE for the last year because he's getting mistreated. The other, I don't even know what the fuck Orange Cassidy's up to nowadays. Is he still doing the the hands-in-the-pocket gimmick? I don't even know what he's doing. I don't fucking watch AEW. I know Joe Bob Briggs does, which makes me want to watch AEW. I just don't fucking want to. <laughs> I don't feel like sitting through 17 Nyla Rose matches. I don't even know if she's still with the company. I know she was at first, but yeah. Um, oh, the original half girl. Let's go, man. W. Uh, new poll, sons. I will vote on those really quickly. Who wins? Okay, if you guys are voting for... Okay, thank you, guys. Ooh, you know... Uh, you know what? I'm going to have to go against the grain here with that one. All right, thank you, guys. Um, for someone like me who's just getting WWE, dude, Sporty, you genuinely did pick the perfect time. It's like Attitude Era was phenomenal. This is like the best time for modern guy for modern guys like you and Sons to get into WWE. Like, I know you at first you got in because of the Rumble, and I know you weren't watching for for a, a while just because Sabers and stuff. I'm assuming you're watching more so now because they're the Sabers are kind of out, and so it's like, hey, watch something that gives me entertainment. <laughs> But, like, you genuinely did pick the best time to get into WWE Sporty. And and Suns as well, you too. Like, you guys could not have gotten into WWE at a better time. Like, I... I, Which is funny, because if WWE was like how it was in 2013, 2014, you guys would probably watch it to make fun of it because of how shitty it was. But now you guys are watching it to, like... Oh, yeah, I'm interested in what's going to happen this week. I love that, guys. Um, And also, Mr. Beanus, by the way, yes, I, I do agree. Vince might be a piece of shit. He was a phenomenal businessman. He knew how to run a company and he knew um what to do he knew what to do to get people watching and yeah but um but yeah i i couldn't agree more that he is a fan with a lot of money unfortunately wcw 2.0 i i think you could argue they're like wcw 95 ish i think they're approaching wcw 99 especially because um i don't think aw Fuck, when was, uh, what's their show? Is it Dynamite? Um, is it Dynamite? I think that's their main show. Yeah, it's Dynamite. I don't know if they're, um, I I forget if that's tonight or tomorrow, but I know they're supposed to be airing that all-in footage, and it's like, okay, okay, it's tomorrow. I just saw the graphic yet, so it's tomorrow. It's like, come on, like, like, they're, they're genuinely approaching 99, 2000 levels of WCW, where it's like, hey, we're appearing. We're appealing to the smart marks. We're appealing to the marks. Brawl out, ah, brawl in, eh? You, you guys get it, right, eh? It's like, come on, like I get a lot of casual fans know about brawl out and brawl in or whatever the, it was called. The footage, I don't even know which footage they're airing. If it's brawl out, if it's fucking, I don't know what they're airing. I'm assuming it's brawl out because the young bucks are showing the footage, but. It might be Punk and fucking uh, Glass Dude. Genuinely the only notable thing he's ever done in professional wrestling, which I think is fucking hilarious. Um, I forget his name genuinely. All I know him is, is fucking Glass Boy. 
Um, but yeah, I they're quickly approaching those WCW 2.0 levels, which are 90 uh, 2000 levels, which sucks because, like Sporty said, even a year or two ago it was trash. But you could tell it was going in an upward trend. Like I would actually argue that last year Sporty was very good, especially with the Roman Reigns and Sammy's and Sammy Zayn stuff. It was very good, but just there's not a lot there. There was not a lot there in terms of uh, actual uh, full out substance. And hey, we've got depth. It was a lot of the main event scene, and they did make stars out of it. Sammy Zayn was made a star. Kevin Owens was made a star. Jay Uso, whose nickname is literally main event, was made a big star because of it. Cody fucking Rhodes. He was pushed like a main eventer when he first came in, but this really made him uh, a main event dude, this program with Roman. Um, and even, uh, again, Roman Reigns, he was a main event guy, but he's become kind of mainstream because of this four-year WWE reign, WWE title reign. But um, but yeah, I, I, I hate that there's not a lot of good competition there. It's like, I've heard TNA is pretty decent right now, but they've kind of embraced that. Yeah, we're not going to be a big wrestling company, but hey. We've got guys. You want to watch some entertaining wrestling? Come by. You know, they've kind of embraced that role, which I appreciate that. I like that, actually. You know, you do have the indie promotions as well. You've got AEW. It just sucks there's not really a... Not even necessarily a WCW trying to run WWE out of business, but like a consistent one and two where it's like, hey, we're not really trying to compete with you, but I mean, you know, we're over competition. You know, you kind of got to pay attention to us, you know. There's not really that. It feels like AEW is trying to be direct competition to WWE without trying to be all that different, unfortunately. Um, Salty, yeah, WWE is pretty cool, dude. I would I would definitely check it out if I were you. I, I think this time is, like, the perfect time. Like, Mania 40 just happened. We're on, like, the week after shows. Dude, 100%, I would check out WWE if you're into it. I would check out a couple shows. See if, see if you're into it. That'd be awesome. Uh, Mr. Venus, if I was MJF, I would stay in AEW for a few more years and milk Tony for all the money he can, then go to WWE. Exactly, Mr. Venus. That is actually a really smart choice. That's probably something MJF would do as well. That's probably something he would do as well, is stay in, w stay in AEW, milk Tony, go to WWE. Like you said, once KO, Roman Rollins have calmed down, Cody. Well, maybe not Cody, because I think you could work a really entertaining MJF and Cody program. But yeah, like once like KO, Zayn, Rollins, those guys have calmed down... I do think Roman is not fully done. I think he's partly done, though. I think he becomes that Brock Lesnar part-time type of guy where, um, where you know, he shows up a couple times a year and it's kind of big and meaningful. He'll win, so when he loses, it's that much more, you know, holy shit, this dude beat Roman Reigns, you know? I think he kind of becomes that Brock Lesnar-esque type, type of guy, at least I believe. Uh, I had a friend back in fifth grade who was really into it. Hey, let's go, so, Salty W. WWE is so much star power. It would be smart for MJF to stay in AEW. It would be Mr. Venus because he elevates his own level and then, boom, goes to WWE. And even though it's Triple H and not Vince and he'd probably immediately make him a main eventer because that'd be the smart thing to do, you know, it's still like, hey, like Cody did, boost that value. Hey, I'm a main eventer. I'm a main eventer. I'm a fucking free agent. And everybody flips out over it. That would happen now if MJF was a free agent. But like you said, I think it would be smart. Stay in AEW for like two, three, four more years. Wait for that star power to die down, and then boom. I'm all but guaranteed a main event. Yeah, a world title run. So yeah, and AEW is trying to compete with WWE with the indie uh, indie wrestling. Exactly. Like, they're trying to do a bunch of spot fests and gimmick matches. You know, hey, let's have a fucking piranha match. I'm surprised they haven't done that yet. You know, but they're trying so hard to compete with that indie wrestling, which there's nothing wrong with that. Indie wrestling can be great. It can be phenomenal, even. No, no pun intended to AJ Styles, but um, shout out AJ Styles by the way, the gay community. <laughs> I'll be very surprised if there's like anyone in here that doesn't get that reference yet. But um, but they're trying to compete with that. I agree. I'm just I, I don't think it works. I think that if AEW really wanted to be on their own, get rid of a lot of the WWE guys. Work out Dean Ambrose. Work out. I think they've worked out Jericho by now. Work out a bunch of those guys and build up guys like MGF and Orange Cassidy. And, and Jungle Boy and build up these guys who are your own breed really you know MJF I didn't know who the fuck he was until AEW you know it's like fucking like if I'm a guy if I'm Tony Khan which firstly I would kill myself about three years ago if I was but, but 
if me and Tony Khan just switched places, for example, firstly, I'd be probably broke by now because I'd be a fucking billionaire. But legitimately, though, but legitimately, though, if I was Tony Khan, I had that, that amount of money. I'm bringing in one or two guys. I'd bring in, you know, maybe not a John Cena, but I'd bring in a big name guy. Maybe I would bring in a Jericho because I think he actually would work. I actually would have brought in Edge if he if he wanted to come over. But I'd be putting Edge with guys like MGF and Orange Cassidy. Maybe not Orange Cassidy, but I'd be putting these guys with AEW guys and seeing, hey, look, our guys are just as good as these guys. You know, they can go in the ring and they, even if they might not end up beating Edge or, or, um, or Corner, as I really think it would have been funny if he was called that, um, you know, it, they can at least compete and be on the same level. It's like, you know, like, it's no longer like, oh, okay, yeah, these guys are so much better than the AEW guys. They would have been looking completely on par, you know? Like, I, I, I think that it's just... It sucks that Tony Khan really has fumbled the ball with how good AEW could have and should have been. His biggest issue, number one, was hiring the Young Bucks to be EVPs. The Young Bucks are so fucking stupid. They are not fit for EVPs. Number two, again, I mentioned earlier... Being a friend instead of a boss, first off. Three, not treating CM Punk well. I would have actually brought CM Punk in as well, by the way. I would have brought in CM Punk. Biggest name in professional wrestling history to ever be a free agent, really. Yeah, I, I think that it would have been... Uh, I would have worked a lot better. And I probably would have fired Glass Dude, whoever the fuck Punk uh, had that beef with. I would have fired... The, to be fair, if I was also Tony Khan, I would have never hired the Young Bucks in the first place. But... Yeah, um, I couldn't agree. How many WrestleManias happened? This was the 40th one, Salty, that just happened. There was 40 of WrestleManias so far. Uh, bro, that main, dude, that main event is hype, dude. So I keep going back just to watch the five-minute segment of just fucking Rock and Cena and Taker and all that. And just I keep watching that. It's like, God, that's so good, you know? I started watching 2013. Like I said, I don't know how I watched and Like, that shit, 2014 was good. And exactly, it started being shit until, like, 2015, dude. Like... That's why I got out of it, because it's like, 2015, there was potential, because Mania 31 was fantastic, I will still, I will still potentially argue that Mania 31 could be a top 5 Mania, or top, not 5, not top 5, top 10, at least top 15, it's in the better half of Manias, for sure, um, and then 2016, just, for example, Mania 32, such a massive disappointment, to be fair, WWE had like 55 injuries to their top guys, Rollins was out, Cena was out, Rock couldn't really work because he had a movie to go film, Bray was hurt, that's why he couldn't wrestle, uh, eight of their top guys were hurt, that's why they had to kind of build around what they could, unfortunately, um, and then yeah, 2017, I was so excited about the brand split, because we wanted it back since it was thrown out in 2012, and it just kind of sucked, I mean, aside from Stephanie McMahon being Stephanie McMahon, and Kurt Angle and Mick Foley both actually having pretty fun reigns as GMs. It's like, you know, it's like, it just, it sucked. And then, yeah, like you said, uh, 2022, you saw the light at the tunnel last year. You're almost there. And then this year, boom, new era. You're in that, you're, you, you can feel that era, that new era, that Triple H fantastic era. You can feel that shit. Are you feeling that shit? Are you feeling that shit? Peace to the resistance. All right. Um. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah, we got some big names in here. Holy shit. Um, we do have some big names. Damn, really? Wow, that sucks. Damn. All right. Uh, all right. But yeah. All right. So. I got into this game, so I'm going to read the current comments, and then we're going to get into the game recap. I apologize for anyone who's waiting patiently to hear the game recap still, which, to be fair, at this point, if you're not just looking at the score and saying, yeah, Habs is kind of dominated, fair, but if you're not looking at that at that point and thinking, if you're looking at the, if you're looking at the score and thinking, well, God, I got to hear how this game went, firstly, thank you, because you're probably wanting to hear it from me, which I appreciate that. But yeah, bro, after Mania 40, why would an indie wrestler choose AEW? Exactly, sons. Like, why would I look at AEW and say, well, I could wrestle in front of like 3,000 people a night. 
you know, to be fair, wrestling for 3,000 people, probably making like $500,000. <laughs> Fucking nice. But why would I do that? And then look at WWE and say, hey, I can make like $8 million over four years and get to wrestle in front of 80,000 people guaranteed at least once a year. It's like, hmm, you know, like, this is pretty good. You know, it's like, I'd fucking easily go to WWE. Like, come on. Um, if people, dude, yeah, if people thought low of AW before, after Mania 40, like, they look awful, dude. Especially with, like, the crowd in Quebec that went viral for how few people were there. Just the, the overall attendance issues, you know, hard cam showing, like, 18,000 people, it looks like, in the arena. And then they show the other angle and completely empty. It's like... Like you said, Mr. Venus, they need to rebuild. Like, they need to go into some type of rebrand, you know, strip things down, fire some of the guys, you know. I'm not for, you know, oh, yeah, you should fire wrestlers, they should be out of job, but just, you gotta do something, you know, just to make it your own, not just be, oh, yeah, okay, D- Miro and, you know, w- uh, Dean Ambrose and Chris Jericho, Christian and Edge, okay, so it's WWE Light, well, you know, I'll go watch that and. Uh, Brody Lee, rest his soul, when he was in the AEW, you know, and I don't know. I think this is ridiculous that the amount of names from WWE that AEW hired, it's literally becoming WCW 2.0. Uh, so yeah, dude, Cena, then Rock, then Seth, then Taker, which is funny. I'm sure I wasn't the only one. I, I, I'm pretty sure Sons might have been, and you might have been, Mr. Venus. I could not have been the only one that for like a split second... For a split second, I thought John Moxley was going to be coming out with Seth Rollins. I could not have... I was not the only one. I know I saw a lot on Twitter. But in this chat, I could not have been the only one for a split second thinking, there's no way Dean... Exactly, Mr. Venus, dude. I thought I thought it was going to be Dean. like, Because I, I, you don't hear the, the S.H.I.E.L.D. music, even if for Seth. So it was like... Like, obviously looking back, it's like... Obviously looking back, it's like, okay, that's kind of obvious. Because you think back to the Seth promo... I'm fine with being your shield, you know? So it's like, okay, that's... Okay, that's kind of obvious looking back. But in the moment, it's like... Okay, Dean used the shield... He was in the shield. Why wouldn't he use that to fuck with Roman? Holy shit, Dean's back! You know, I thought that, and it's just like... God! <laughs> Damn it! Oh, dude, that would've been sick, dude. Because Triple H would know how to book Dean, Dean Ambrose, dude. He'd know how to book... He'd know how to book John Moxley. He would get the name John Moxley over, first of all, but yeah. Triple H is all the positives of Vince with the progressiveness Vince lacked exactly, Mr. Venus. Triple H is a great businessman. He knows professional wrestling. He's extremely smart, both in and out of the ring, you know. He's a guy, and as well, he knows when wrestling is evolving. He knows how to evolve it himself. He knows what to do. Is everything he does the right decision? Yeah, no. He's made two or three fumbles over the last year, but they're not major, you know? You know, the only, the closest you can get is Cody and Rock, which apparently was... The intention was to go Cody Roman and then pivot to Rock Roman and then pivot again to Cody and Roman, which apparently that was the plan. Apparently is what's coming out now. That was the whole time the thing. That was weird, but yeah, um... But yeah, no, I couldn't agree more, dude. I love Triple H, which is hilarious because 20 years ago, you tell people, you tell like the the ICW, like, hey, dude, um, Triple H is going to be loved. Like, you guys are going to love him as a booker. Nobody would believe you. And even a decade ago, to an extent, they'd be like, well, I mean, he's doing NXT. He might be okay. And now you, you look at it and it's like, yeah, no, Triple H is not a wrestler. He is a booker. He was born to be a booker. He was born to be the 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 showrunner of the WWE. He was meant to be the boss of WWE, you know? Which is hilarious cuz people will still say he fucked his way into into the role, which you can kind of argue, but I mean, you can't say he doesn't deserve it at this point. You can't say he doesn't deserve it. Well, well not, not he doesn't you know what I mean? He, you can't say he doesn't deserve being where he is now. Because he deserves it. I'll let, you, I'll let you talk about the game now. Yeah, Mr. Venus. I like how he said that. And then it's like, I just kept going on and on. <laughs> Thank you, man. Dude, I could go on all night as well. Dude, dude, if you want to check out some wrestling content of mine after this stream, I did a couple streams for WWE 2K15's 2K Showcase. Um, I did a couple streams. And I actually did it in video form first. And then I picked it up in stream form because I thought that'd be pretty funny. 
or not pretty funny. I thought I thought it'd be better to get viewer interaction live. If you want to check those out? Go ahead. We're actually going to be doing some more wrestling content over the summer. I'm probably going to be doing. Um, I I wish I could do 2K22 and 2K23, but I can't because the copyright footage is a fucking bitch. But uh, maybe I'll do 2K16. Maybe I'll maybe I'll talk about my own top my unpopular opinion that I do not like the Austin 316 showcase mode. I know that might be a bit unpopular, but that's what opinions are for. Um, but no, seriously, I'd love to talk about the wrestling and, uh, we can do some streams for sure, man. I, I would love to talk with you forever, but I know, yeah, dude, yeah, Mr. Bean, it's like I said, I gotta be out by, like, one. I didn't either get out. Holy shit, let's go, boys. I found my alt account. <laughs> I found my fucking alt account, boys. You guys might be wondering, Harry, how are you typing with your alt without, don't ask, don't ask questions you don't want the answers to. You're a beast. Thank you, Mr. Beatus. Dude, you too, man. You are the Mr. Beast. <laughs> oh, dude, guys, you guys could say Mr. Beast is in my chat, technically. That's all I'm going to say. But yeah, dude, like, it was a good concept. I will say this before we get into the game about 2K16 real quick. Uh, for anybody who might be watching this after and thinking, what? It was a good concept. The, the foundation of an Austin 316 showcase is perfect. Having it in 2K16 to be 2K316 works perfectly. It's... A once in life, literally a once in a generation thing that you can do, and it was perfect. In theory and in concept of okay, 2K16, Austin awesome 316, yeah, let's do it. The way they went about it was kind of bad <laughs> because they took 2K15. It should have been bigger, Mr. Venus. It should have been bigger, but also smaller. Funny enough, because I get you can't have Mania 15, 17, and 19. You can't have. Mania 18. You can't just showcase all his Mania matches. You have to kind of showcase from the beginning to where he ends. But on one hand, why are all his pre-WWE matches just bonus matches? Have a start in WCW, you know? Build it up as, hey, there's this young upstart from Texas, you know? He's got a little potential. His name's like Stunning Steve Austin, you know, whatever. Play like one or two matches, you know? And then, okay, well, he gets let go. He's FedExed. He's fired via FedEx. And he goes to ECW. Fuck it. Don't even... You can have the Mikey Ripwreck match. I would have animated one of those fucking ECW promos. Give us literally... his. Give us one of his 20 minute promos. Just in animated form. Because nobody would bitch about that. You'd have to be insane to bitch about getting a 20 minute Steve Austin promo for free in your video game. You know? Maybe you have a quick time event where if you mess it up, he doesn't get the promo right and they have to restart. I think that'd be kind of fun. But have the, have at least one of those ECW promos. The rip the whip wreck match. Then you go to WWE. You have King of the Ring 96, Austin awesome 316, blah, 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 blah. You go to Mania 13. I like that they showcased Survivor Series 96 against Hard, actually. I like they showcased Mania 13 as well. And yeah, definitely. Most of my favorite matches of Austin's are not WrestleMania for sure, but I was just... Those are, for some reason, just the ones that were coming off the top of my head real quick, you know? Have SummerSlam 99 against... take or, uh, 98, I think it was, you know? Uh, fuck, yeah, I, I know we can't have it because Martha, but... SummerSlam 97, I think it was, or 90, I think it was 97. Have that against Owen. Or have Survivor Series 97 against Owen. One of those would have been incredible to have. I know you can't, again, because Martha hates WWE and blah, 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 blah fantasy booking here you have one of those matches at least no Kurt Angle as well Mr. Venus it sucks that he was in TNA and by the time he came over two years later for 2k18 it wasn't an awesome showcase dude like you could have had so much uh, you could have had, had at least one or two of the matches from the invasion angle like okay they weren't great but imagine getting the match from invasion or survivor series 01 which by the way quick pivot again before we move on 2K15, I love that game. I will admit this. I, I I hate that the roster is so small. It has a phenomenal universe mode. I always love playing universe mode. It's got one of the best in my opinion. Does someone want to answer the question? Survivor Series 2002. We all know it if we know WWE. It's the green, you know, the first elimination chamber. It's got that green kind of styling to it. MSG. It's beautiful. Anyone want to tell me why the graphics are for Survivor Series 2001? Does anybody want to tell me how they fucked that up that bad? The actual match graphic, I believe, and the, the thing in Universe Mode, 
They're both normal. They're both the, the, the Survivor Series 2002. Does anyone want to tell me why the graphic when you're setting it up is Survivor Series 01? Because that has pissed me off. Back in 2014, when I got 2K15 for Christmas, and I started playing WWE 2K15, that is one thing that I that I hated about 2K15. More than the roster being as small as it was, I hated that Survivor Series 0102 little bug thing. And it never got patched. It never got fixed. As far as I know. And I hated it. I know people have done like roster arena mods, which are arena mods, which... I kind of want to install, but I don't want to mess up my copy. <laughs> I'm sure it's easy to restart it, but I just, yeah. Mr. Bean, us me too, dude. We are the exact same person. We have to be, dude. I love 2K15 Showcase as well, dude. I love the Ruthless Aggression era. I didn't grow up during it. I was born in 02. I didn't grow up much in that era, but I loved the Ruthless Aggression era. Going back and watching a lot of it, I was so happy when it was announced. He have to be related. <laughs> also, yes, I agree. Uh, Kurt Angle is the top three Austin feud. It was fantastic. So many matches you could have included. It sucks that Royal Rumble 01 was included, but you didn't have any of the, like, oh, well, Triple H took on Kurt Angle. Austin interfered. You couldn't really mention that all that much, you know? I love they had the Rumble 01, No Way Out, and WrestleMania. There should have been Kurt Angle. There should have been, I think, one or two more Taker matches. I think there was... I don't even recall there being a single one, actually. And I get there's some stuff you really kind of couldn't use or sh probably shouldn't have used because it was in WWE 13. You had the entire Austin chapter for WWE 13. It was good. We don't mind if you reuse one or two of those things. It's almost like with 2K24. I didn't buy 2K24, firstly, because I heard the 2K showcase was fucking ridiculous. But secondly, there are like 23 matches for 40 years of WrestleMania mode. 30 years WrestleMania mode had like 47 matches. It's like, we don't care if you just do Andre and stud again. Do the fucking man. You have like five of the six big players from the WrestleMania one main event. It's right there. It's right there. And also I realize we're supposed to be talking about a game. I don't care. I'm on a fucking tangent right now. I don't care. We'll talk about hockey in like 35 minutes. No, legitimately probably 5-10 minutes. I just need to get this off my chest. Have the Mania 1 main event. Mr. T's fucking DLC last year. I'm pretty sure he's in the game. You have Rowdy Piper as DLC this year, I think. Hogan's no longer blackballed for saying the N-word. Because we apparently just completely forgot that happened. Paul Orndorff, I think, was added to the game this year. Muhammad Ali was in the base game. The dude wasn't even fucking DLC. You had a... You had like... I'm heated with you, yeah, <laughs> Mr. Venus. let's go. You had like five of the six big players, the only one. Mr. T, Rowdy Piper, oh, you, you, Cowboy Bob Orton, fucking Randy Orton's dad. Fucking Randy could have gone over to him and say, hey dad, I uh, want you to be in the 2K game. You sign this, you'll get royalties or whatever. It's, fuck it, okay, sure. You could have gotten fucking Cowboy Bob Orton, dude. Like, I get the whole hepatitis thing. I know, uh, yeah, I get the whole hepatitis thing with him and fucking him and The Undertaker and that Armageddon Hell in a Cell. That kind of gave WWE a little bad blood, I feel like, with Cowboy Bob for a while. Still could have fucking gotten him in the goddamn video games, you know? Mr. Bean is exactly, dude. Mike, to, excuse you, the Enforcer being in 2K16... It lost a lot of points as well. It was hilarious. I will say it was hilarious meme. I think it's an hilarious. It's hilarious whenever it gets mentioned that uh, it wasn't Mike Tyson at WrestleMania 14. It was the Enforcer. I find that funny. But like you said, he was literally in 13. Like there's no way from one game to this game, his fucking demands skyrocketed. I get his demands are probably high because it's Mike Tyson. The motherfucker was DLC in WWE 13. And you still had the match! You still... You still had the match in the actual game! 2K24... 2K14? You played as the fucking Ultimate Warrior at WrestleMania 6 and he was the pre-order DLC! <laughs> like, what the fuck? 2K15, Hogan was your DLC, and you delisted the shit because he's racist! You... <laughs> and like you said,
that is WWE. They can fucking afford it. I mean, to be fair, I think it's I think it's 2K that pays for that. But still, they could have gone to WWE and be like, hey, can we borrow like $250,000 for Mike Tyson? I don't know how much it is for royalties. I'm assuming Tyson demands that much because, again, it's Mike fucking Tyson. But like, can we borrow $250,000? And it's like, fuck, sure. Why not 2K? What are you going to do? Cancel our game if we don't give you the money? Of course, Yeah. Plus, it probably gets more eyes on the game again. It's like, it doesn't even need to be playable. Just have them in the fucking mode. It's probably less expensive. Like, that was... I hated that. Fuck. And then, like... Tyson, wasn't he DLC in, like, the UFC games at the same time? I understand at the time that might have actually been a little bit of an issue. But no, because, like... Like, obviously, they weren't Endeavor at that point. But, like, still, like... Yet Mike Tyson in the UFC games, why couldn't he sign a contract with WWE games, with 2K to do that? Dude, yeah, everybody left, you know, I don't care if Mr. Breed is, I'm, I'm down to talk wrestling for a couple more minutes, because again, I am fucking heated about 16, you know? But I hate that they had, like I said, the bonus matches for Austin pre-WWE out of order, you had to go out of your way to play them, and it's like... I don't know. <laughs> I did love WWE 2K15's uh, 2K showcases, though. Even the DLC ones. I really like them. And you know what? If I can get one of my controllers to work... Actually, no, because my, my, con my PS4 controller connects to the to my uh, computer. I think I'm going to play some 2K15 tonight after the stream before I go to bed. Because I, I, I'm being reminded now. I'm thinking of how good Universe Mode was. And I really want to play that. <laughs> you still fuck with cards? talking about like cards of humanity cards against humanity or, or am i just being stupid because if we're talking about cards against humanity dude i fucking love cards against humanity i haven't played that shit in a few years though unfortunately i've never thought to do it with the boys which now i'm thinking about it holy shit oh hockey cards oh fuck yeah dude salty absolutely i still fuck with hockey cards i haven't bought a lot i haven't bought a lot recently unfortunately just because i have a ton of them and we don't go out to the dollar store as much as we uh, we used to um, for some reason, we just don't need stuff as often as we do, um, like that come from the dollar store. So we don't go there often. So I don't get the hockey cards much, but, um, but yeah, I've got a ton of like doubles. I still fuck with the cards though. I still fuck with the hockey cards for sure though, man. Absolutely. Um, dude. Yeah. But dart stuff. I, I can imagine how expensive it is, dude. I can imagine slap stuff is going up big time because of the fucking hat trick tonight because of how he's played recently. Like, holy shit. I went and rewatched WWE from 97 and plan to keep going until 2009. I'm currently at May 2002. Oh boy, I hope you know what's coming up in a few months, Mr. Venus. I hope you know what's coming up soon, my guy. My condolences <laughs> to Kane. Hopefully. Assault, yeah, dude. Hopefully the hopefully Bedard stuff comes down or you're able to. Mr. Venus, not only the shovel, man, but just... Oh God, uh, poor Katie Vick, man. I hope, I really hope that I see you in the future in the streams, so I know that you've gotten through Katie Vick without any physical or mental harm, my guy. <laughs> God damn. <sighs> Fuck. My my condolences if you if you end up watching the Katie Vick stuff, my guy. All right, I'm down to continue this conversation. However, I'm gonna start on the game recap because we're an hour and a half in. No big lines. For the Canadians were Caulfield, Suzuki, Slavkovsky, Gallagher, Newhook, Armia, Pearson, Evans, Anderson, Pazetta, Dvorak, Harvey, Pinard, Matheson, Savard, Harris, Kobasevich, and Struble, Barron were on the blue line. Sam Montembeau got to start in at tonight's action, and Caden Primo backs him up, having played quite well last game. Maybe getting the start against the Islanders? I don't know how they want to go about that game, considering it's probably fight night, but we'll see. For those who don't, uh, for those who don't know, like Mr. Bean, I don't know if he knows, but uh, Gallagher, the headshot on Ryan Pulak. I'm assuming Lanners are probably going to want to come after Brendan Gallagher. So, yeah. Um, the opening lines for the Flyers. And if I get any of these name wrong, names wrong, I apologize. But Forster, Frost, Tippett, Farabee, Lawton, Konechny, uh, Lycel, uh, Paling, uh, Hathaway, Cates, Couturier, Brink. Shout out Bobby Brink. Should have been a Boston Bruin. So you could say Boston Bruin, Bobby Brink. Uh, York San Shout out to the hockey guy for that. York Sanheim, Sealer, Drysdale, and Johnson Stahl. Which ones? Which Johnson and which Stahl? Uh, you take a guess. Samuel Urson gets the star. Seriously though, uh, Eric Johnson and uh, Mark Stahl. It's not happening. Also, round two begins. Oh shit, let's go, sons. Let's go. Alright, me, please vote for me. 
Uh, oh shit, I didn't, um, sorry guys, I didn't, uh, <laughs> Akbar, <laughs> thank you guys, uh, okay, I didn't see, sorry guys, um, <laughs> me, please vote for me, <laughs> oh shit, I love you guys, we have so many inexperienced young guys, dude, Mr. Venus, that's the way the Canadians have been the last, like, three years, man, dude, like, we've been in this rebuild, I know the Flyers are trying to go through, like, a retool, like, a kind of on-the-spot retool, I feel like, which is kind of weird, but, um, God, yeah, like, I, I genuinely don't get, like, you said, you first came and you said the collapse is hilarious or something like that. I genuinely don't know how this is happening. You guys have lost, like, 8 out of 10, I feel like. 8, eight out of your last 10. I don't get how that happens. I just, that sucks. Um, Samuel Erson gets the starting out for the Flyers. I put Ivan uh, Fedotov, or Fedotov, they said something like that on commentary. Or the play-by-play. -play. I thought it was Ivan Fedotov. Apparently it's Fedotov or something like that. That's weird. Flyers shouldn't tank for a year. That is true, Salty. They should probably be tanking for three, four years if they want. Some pretty damn good prospects. I will say there's some damn good prospects coming up in the next couple years. Probably could have gotten a first for Scott Lawton, apparently. Um, they actually made the right move trading off, what's his name, the defenseman. And then I think they re-signed Nick Sealer. Oh, Flyers should have tanked for a year. Oh, I do agree with you then, actually, Salty. I think they should have tanked for a year and then just kind of retooled, uh, rebuild it, I should say. Because uh, tanking one year, who are you getting rid of? You're getting rid of probably Scott Lawton, Garnet Hathaway, Nick Delorier. Which, by the way, what the fuck is happening to Nick Delorier? Because the bro should have been, bro should have been in tonight's game. What the fuck is happening with him? Trade Sean Couturier when you could have, you know, um, Carter Hart when he had the chance. Which, uh, to be fair, they kind of tried to in the off season. You know, there's a couple guys you could have traded for. Uh, I think the pressure of the playoffs plus active experience is our biggest thing. That's true, Mr. Venus. Like, Sam Erson. Carter Hart kind of fucked him over by doing what he did, like, five years early, technically. Um, the defense. Drysdale, Sealer, Sandheim, York. Okay, what the fuck? My hand is like... My hand is like, no, numb. Exactly, Salty. Yeah, no, nobody was going to get Hart. LA rejected them. Exactly. Also, I just realized I just put on my fucking ring. I just realized that. All right. We got the ring on now, boys. Actually, let me see if I can get it on uh, this finger. Yeah, there we go. But, um... But, yeah, dude. Like, LA rejected and They needed a goaltender. Yeah, dude. Like, nobody... I feel like everybody kind of knew Hart was involved in that, that, that sexual assault thing, which sucks uh, that it didn't come out sooner. But, you know what? I, I, at least they have the evidence now. They could probably uh, convict them. Fuck Carter Hart. Which sucks, because... I like the dude when he was in the NHL. I don't want to be saying that, but just the shit that he did, not fucking good whatsoever. I think, the, uh, but yeah, the pressure of the playoffs and lack of experience is definitely a pretty big uh, issue for sure. Yeah, Sean Walker. Thank you, Salty. That's who they got rid of. And yeah, you guys have first round selection drafts, definitely. Yeah, plus, huh. there's no guarantee you guys don't make moves at the draft or at free agency, or during free agency, technically, you could say. To move guys for more first round picks, there's no guaranteeing that you guys don't end up doing that. There's no guaranteeing you guys don't. And yeah, exactly. Even if he didn't do it, he knew about it and should have spoken up. Exactly, Mr. Venus, for sure. Like, um, unless somehow he actually did know about it, which come on, he kind of did. But yeah, dude. Like, even if he didn't do it, he did know about it. Which, I mean, I kind of get like maybe being worried for some reason, but like, I don't know. Exactly. He's a fucking dumbass if he did it in the first place. The fucking moron, and you know what? I, and like you said, salty. Even even it was kind of messed up to say. At least he was the only star sent to the gulag. Really, every other one was kind of fringe guys. So at least it wasn't like oh, it was Hart and Makar and the two other guys who were big from that team Canada. At least it was just. I mean, it, it shouldn't have happened in the fucking first place. Five guys fucking raping this fucking unconscious girl, and yeah, all that talent pissed away, dude. Like. I fucking, it, it's disgusting. Fuck Carter Hart, and, you know, I hope he fucking rots. If if he is found guilty, you know, if he knew about it, nah, shame. You're still an asshole, but if he didn't do it, I guess that's still technically better than him doing it, so. Meh. Nah. But, yeah. Carter would have been great for the, for the, for the, for the Flyers, I agree, Salty. It sucks that he didn't end up, um... It sucks that he didn't end up wanting to play for them, unfortunately. Uh, Fedotov does have potential, for sure. I know he's 27, but goalies take, like, two, three years 
past 26, 27 to develop into a starting goalie. Uh, I, I love Fedotov's potential as well. He's a huge motherfucker. I think if he works on the glove and the five hole, which was really kind of exposed tonight, uh, we'll get into those goals. I think he can definitely have potential to be a very solid starter for the Flyers, and I think that'd be great. Dude, he probably will ball out to the KHL, unfortunately, Salty. Exactly, Mr. Venus, you had a sh- uh, heart jersey. Keyword, had. Now I gotta ask, did you did you buy it or... Or buy it? Did you burn it or did you... Um, or did you just uh, get rid of it? Um, like, because if you're asking me, I would have burnt that shit. I easily would have burnt that. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. For me, I, uh, I probably would have burnt that shit. I, I probably would have burnt that. I, I mean, I don't know. Maybe I would have like pissed on it, shit on it, you know, you know, give it a little fucking spit action. You know, I probably would have desecrated that Jersey more so than just, Hey, burn it. But I don't know. You do you. If you decide that just burning it was fair. That's good, you know. That's perfectly fine. Uh, before the game, uh, another moving day. Um, <laughs> come on it, salty. I want to give in heart that. Well, actually, you know what? To be fair, to be fair, with Carter Hart, he probably didn't doesn't want to get cummed on. So, give him give him that feeling that he gave that fucking girl in a way. Fuck you, Carter Hart. I tore the numbers and names off and hung it on my wall. You know what? That's completely fair, Mister Benus. Tore the tore the tore the numbers of a heart and name off. Well, actually, technically, you could have just reversed the numbers and changed the heart nameplate to McDavid. <laughs> we are trying to call him home. <laughs> you could have done something like that, maybe, or maybe fucking ninety-seven. Uh, who who else was ninety-seven in the league? Kucherov could have tried to summon him, maybe something like that. But um, yeah, before the game, it would be wired. Oh shit! Okay, must be that. Shit, hey, Kaprizov trying to summon Kaprizov to join, to join the team. Uh, also, uh, moving day by the way. That's not like us. We're not moving. We're helping a, a relative move, which is why I gotta get to bed early today because it's another moving day tomorrow. So, yeah, I said uh, let's see how tired I am by game time. Uh, I almost took a nap during the second period. Not would have slept, but just you know, close my eyes, listen to the game. Um, I didn't, thankfully. Uh, Arbor Jack I season, unfortunately as well, has been ended. He had a shoulder surgery or is having shoulder surgery. I think he had it. Um, I guess technically it's good. It was the other shoulder, not the one he broke last year against Vincent DeHarnay or dislocated, whatever happened to it. I guess good news. It was the other shoulder, but also bad because both his shoulders are not shot, but they're out by 23, which that really sucks. However, from one Jack Eye having bad news to another having pretty f- good news, funny enough, Florian Jack Eye has signed his ELC with the Montreal Canadiens, so the rest of the league going, fuck, there's two of them. Yeah. Um, Florian actually signs his ELC to start next year. He signs a PTO, a professional tryout with the Laval Rocket for the remainder of the year, so I'm excited to see him. Hopefully the Rocket play tomorrow. Actually, I don't think they do. I think they only play on the weekends. Shit. Um, I gotta see if I can find a Laval Rocket schedule real quick. <laughs> Alright, um, yeah, so the Rocket, um, it is the ninth. Actually, they do play in two days, so it's tomorrow, or actually today, fuck, is Wednesday, and that's the free day for the Habs, and then tomorrow is the day where they play. So if Jack Eye does get into the lineup then, that sucks. Um,. Yeah, and I think we also play Sunday, so I might not be seeing him play then either. Um, which, by the way, quick update for the Laval Rockets. Um, if I can get the AHL standings pulled up real quick, I can actually tell you guys real quick um, where the Laval Rockets stand. Oh, apparently on the AHL's website, my my security, my information is not uh, secure. The AHL's website is currently down. You've got to be fucking kidding me. The Laval Rockets, uh, the AHL's website is currently down. Uh, also, the Laval Rocket with three games, four games left in their schedule uh, are currently three points out of a playoff spot. The uh, Marlies, though, have two games in hand, which kind of sucks, I'll admit. However, meh, you know, I guess if they miss out, whatever. Harry, you're in bait. Oh, all right, perfect. Time to vote against me, I guess. Um, where am I? 
All right, who wins? Harry or... Okay, well, yeah. Who wins? Uh, yeah, I gotta go for those guys. All right. Uh, what the fuck? It is? Dude, it is salty. Yeah, dude. Uh, Darkness, it might have gotten hacked. I, I don't know if it got hacked or if it's just maybe they're going through issues. But yeah, dude, it says... Yeah, so it says 404. The site you were looking for cannot be found. The, this domain is successfully pointed at WP Engine, it, but is not configured for an account on our platform. If you just sign up, we're still likely creating your account. What? Okay, so... Okay, yeah, so the AHL website is, like, currently down. Let me look this up on Twitter. This is developing during the stream, I think, boys. I don't know how long it's been down, but... Uh, AHL website, maybe that'll help. Who the fuck is Jack Perry? <laughs> I'm looking for some, fucking some guy named Jack Perry's trending on uh, Twitter right now. Jungle Boy AEW. Oh, that's the fucking dude. Okay. Okay. That's the fucking... Okay. Okay. Okay, that... Okay, that... That actually makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense. There is nothing here on Twitter to suggest the AHL's website is down right now. That's really funny, actually. The AHL app is working. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Beanus. Uh, funny enough, though, I actually found uh, the Sportsnet website has the standings up pretty well. Um, I got to shower and go to bed. We'll definitely come back. Mr. Beanus, dude, thank you very much for coming by, by the way, man. Uh, I, I guess have a good shower. Have a wonderful sleep, my good sir. I hope to see you in the future. Thank you for coming by, man. Much appreciated, my good sir. Florian is Arbor, but a forward? Uh, yeah, yeah, Salty. Yeah, dude. If he is exactly that, dude, we're going to love Florian. I, I can tell we are going to love Florian Jacki, and I think it's going to be exciting as fuck to see this dude, um play in Laval, even if it's just in Laval. I'm hoping maybe he ends up getting called up, but it's a PTO with Laval. He's not on his ELC yet, unfortunately. Um, it should be confirmed we do see him on... Um, it should basically be confirmed we do see him um, in training camp next year for sure. Salty, I think he has NHL upside. I think it's fourth line, maybe third line if he is like his brother and pans out better um better than we expect i do think he's like his brother he might end up being a good third line guy but i think he could be a good fourth line grinder you know keep the bash brothers together keep the sheriff and his deputy side by side yeah dude yeah scouts hate him because they cannot judge what type of fucking player he's gonna be i love it hey mr venus you're a cool dude too as, as, uh, you're a cool dude as well like you said i love to talk to somebody as, as passionate about wrestling and hockey like i am dude um, funny enough, you should actually stay tuned on the channel because there's a guy who, um, who I'm on a podcast with the link in the description for the Happy Normals podcast. I'm on a podcast with him and he is insanely in love with wrestling and hockey as well. I'm going to see if we can try and do some type of video or show together talking about wrestling and shit, probably during the off season. Um, the other co-host of mine, we're talking about movies and shit a lot probably. So yeah, we're going to be doing a lot of shit in the off season boys. So once the hab season ends, don't you worry your pretty little faces. I am still going to be here during the off season, until training camp, of course, doing some off season stuff. And yeah, um, final polls of round two. All right, sons, I'll do these real quick. Who wins? Oh yeah, this is a tough one. <laughs> come on, come on, sons. Those, those are funny. I have the stream on my PC, so I'll be lurking for a bit. Hey, let's go, Mister Venus. Thank you for the watch time, my brother. Much appreciated, my good sir. Thank you. Scouts hate him, but I liked his highlights. Hopefully, Florian has some skills to contribute. And exactly, not just be a big pylon. Habs Guru, he doesn't seem like that type of guy. I think he does feel like he does seem like an arbor, where if he's typecast as oh he's gonna be this fourth line guy, he wants to push and be that third line guy. If he's typecast to be oh he, you know he might be a good third line power forward, he wants to push to be a top six guy. He wants to push to be the best possible player that he can be. I think he's gonna be very much like his brother in that sense, and I think he's gonna end up really really clicking well in the montreal canadians lineup i'm really excited to see dude exactly sons dude my my alt is gonna be in round three and i think it's genuinely hilarious i saw a game once of him watching kitchener and he caught my eye oh shit salty i like that i like that didn't he get traded to brantford or no are you talking about arbor because i know florian's with brantford 
And they just relocated from Hamilton, I'm pretty sure. I think you might be talking about Arbor. No, wait. I'll, I'll let you decide who you're talking about. I don't even know. But, um, yeah. So, he's on Branford. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Kitchener. Well, what? Oh, you were watching Kitchener and they were playing Branford. That's what... Duh. That's what you meant, I think. I hope that's what you meant. Okay. <laughs> I get it now. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I'm kind of slow sometimes. <laughs> Oh shit! All right, but yeah, uh, like I said, weirdly bad news for one Jack Eye, pretty good news for the other. So Arbor must be feeling a weird array of emotions in the last roughly seventeen or so hours, just like Habs fans were. I found out that Arbor season was ending, and I was like, "Fuck!" And then I found a Flurry was signed. I was like, "Yay!" So I was, I was watching uh, Brustewich, and uh, if you expect me to pronounce Rankoff correctly. You're high. I'm sorry. But, uh, yeah, Bruce DeWitt. I know he's with uh, Calgary. He got traded in that uh, Lindholm deal, I'm pretty sure. I'm hoping he pans out. I think he might be a fun bottom pair guy to watch. Um, and also, Christian Dvorak returns to the lineup. In case you guys missed the lineups about 45 minutes ago, Christian Dvorak returns. He was expected to be out for the remainder of the year, and he's been out. Uh, he's he, he's he been He's back. Oh, shit, this is a tough one. This is a really tough matchup for sure. Oh, shit. I, f oh. I love my boys, but I just, I don't, I don't know. I didn't know who to vote for. I didn't know who to vote for. Um, yeah. So match begins, uh, game begins and the Habs score. Just about a minute six in, a minute five into the game. Jure Savkovsky tips in a shot for Mike Matheson and Cole Caulfield. Habs end up leading. There's a nice press that ends up leading to that goal. Nice shot by Matheson. Smart on Slap to get the tip. Uh, Matheson actually thought he had scored the goal. Funny enough, Slap said during the intermission, I think it was the first intermission, he said he knew. He said he knew that he got the tip on it, but he didn't want to ruin the celebration for Matheson. So I think he told him on the bench, I tipped that goal. That one's mine. And uh, that sucks. But you know what? That's, that's pretty funny. And, you know, props to Slap for not just being like, yo, that's my goal. You know, just, hey, let him, let him have the celebration. You know, he deserves it. Mac is him, bro. Salty, dude. McKinnon and Macklin Celebrini. They're going to be elite for sure, man. Uh, Habs and Pressing. Gallagher has two nice rushes. Uh, flyers, though, off a turnover. Farabee almost gets his first goal in 10 games. Uh, five minutes in, there's a weird bouncer. And Suzuki nearly bats in. Urson makes a nice save. Habs press. Flyers get a good look uh, with their fourth line. Uh, they, were invading, they were invading the crease early in the game. The Flyers were really looking to... Um, Really looking to get some chances. They really want to tie the game up. Uh, again, like kind of not necessarily crashing the crease, but you know, just hey, getting in there, trying to stop Monty from seeing any any good shots. Uh, Flyers keep the Habs from getting shots. Actually, the, the Habs are stuck on five shots for a good while. Konechny has a good hit on uh, Mike Matheson. Matheson, oof, sons. Um, Flyers press for the tie. Forster gets a nice look. Flyers end up taking a late whack at Montembeau. Nobody sees it, though, For uh, so lucky for them. Flyers didn't go to the penalty kill. Keep Slap from the top six. Oh, Salty, dude. There is a 0% chance we take him out off, off of that top line at this point. The only way we do is if we get uh, 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 if we get Nikita Kucherov or one of the, just one of the top wingers, uh, right wingers in the league, which even then, he's playing on the left wing right now. So... Oh, he, uh, no, he's playing on the right one because he's naturally a left winger. Yeah, so he's playing on the right side right now. So, yeah, um, he couldn't, dude, yeah, he couldn't do shit. He, he couldn't do shit with Gallagher. Dude, he was with Anderson for the first 15 games of the year. He could have had 11 points in those first 15 games. If Josh Anderson knew how to finish a fucking play. Dude, yeah, he couldn't do shit with Gallagher last year, exactly. And, and he couldn't do shit with Anderson this year when he was playing with him, dude. Like, and here's the issue. I want to like Brendan Gallagher. I want him to be successful. If Brendan Gallagher next year could score 40 goals, 80 points, that'd be awesome. I'd love that. You know? And I get, he does work. He has effort. But he's just not that good. You know? He scored tonight once because he did the Gallagher thing. And another time because he fucking deeped the shit out of Ivan Fedotov, which we'll get into, of course. But... Brendan Gallagher just is not the player that he used to be. He's beaten up. He's, I don't want to say washed up, but he's getting close to being so worn down. He's probably an LTIR for the last year or two of his contract, which sucks, you know? Exactly, Salty. Like, 
I get why they put Slaff on the third, fourth line. Or I think it was just third line last year to start him. He's a teenager. He's 18, you know. He's just coming to the NHL, you know. And I think that was probably the plan was, you know. Okay, play him third line and then slowly bump him up the lineup. But he ended up getting that, um... He ended up, um, getting that suspension. Um, he ended up getting that suspension. Uh, he, he got the suspension. He then got hurt. It just, it sucks. You know, it, it sucks that that happened last year. But this year, like you said, they put him on that top line and boom, he has taken off. Oh no, Habs Guru. Yeah, he's 15 goals, 30 points. But I'm saying if Gallagher next year could somehow pull a season of 40 goals, 80 points, that'd be awesome. But I know it's not going to happen. If we're lucky, 20 goals, 60 points. If we're lucky, you know, Suns. Yeah, dude, bro. It, it does, I, I, I'm not surprised that Hines is, is voting against me. Genuine. It does not surprise me. Oh, you can. Uh, I didn't know you could. Um, no, I don't want to end the poll. I want to. Can I not see? Can I not see the reactions? Wow. Okay. Piss off then. That sucks. But dude, yeah, honestly, that, that, that doesn't surprise me that he's always voting against me. I'll, sorry, guys, I closed, I opened uh, OBS and, set, and, and uh, kept Streamlabs open, so it might have lagged for a second there. I apologize if it did. But um, but yeah, Gallagher, like you said, he's a heart and soul guy. He's a fourth line guy. Click on votes. Am I stupid? Yes, I am. <laughs> yeah, dude, he, he's voting against me. I, I think it's funny. I don't know. For me, I just... I don't know the way I see it. Meh. Uh, are you on TikTok, Harry Habs Guru? I think I am actually. <laughs> I actually have to open my TikTok. I think I have a TikTok, Harry Rice Hockey. Let me look it up, Harry Rice. Actually, let me go to TikTok and look up Harry Rice Hockey. Because I, I forget if I do have a TikTok or if I've just wanted to create a TikTok. Um. Harry Rice. Hockey. Again, I might have a TikTok account. <laughs> yes, I do actually. I do have a TikTok. It is at Hair Race Hockey. I've not used it once. I want to because I think it'd be really funny to be able to say, follow me on TikTok. I'm posting stuff. But uh, yeah, no, I've not used it. But I do have a TikTok again at Hair Race Hockey. I actually got to see if I still have. I actually got to see if I still have my login information. Let me try and see that real quick. That is bright as all hell. Um, yeah, it'd be appreciated if I press log in. Thank you. I don't want to, okay, I'll do this later. <laughs> but yeah, I am on a TikTok though, Habs Guru, technically. I just don't use it all that often. Uh, but the Habs go to the penalty kill. Bench minor for too many men, that sucks. It's a Flyers power play, it sucks. Shout out the hockey guy. Habs good kill. We're on for one of the penalty kill tonight. Uh, Flyers press, they get some chances off of a Gallagher turnover. Good stops needed by Monty. He makes them. Galligan, uh, Gallagher then takes a hit to cause a three on two. Nice on him, actually, as he had healed on a good pass. That caused a turnover uh, on the three on two. Habs do pressure, and afterwards, the top line out there, they get some chances. A nice Caulfield one timer. There's a slap shot that's blocked by Nick Sealer. Uh, Habs giving it their all at this stage in the game. And in the final minute, Armia, nice steal at the line. Good pass, Newhook, who just misses the net, though. Um, shots uh, 12 to 8 for the Flyers. Habs have a one nothing lead after the first period, though. And in the opening minute, the semifinals. Oh, shit. Let's go. Semifinals. Yeah, I've got to say that Harrison. Come on, dude. Harrison. All good. I found you and followed you. Hey, let's go, Habs Guru. Thank you, man. Appreciate that. Let me see. If I refresh, does it say I have a follower? Oh, my God. It actually does now. That's really funny. It actually does. Let's go, Habs Guru. Thank you for the follow on TikTok. If any of you guys also want to follow me on uh, TikTok, you can at Hair Race Hockey, no spaces, all lowercase letters. My profile picture is the old HR. My description is I like stuff. Very, very uh, descriptive, I know. Yeah, uh, you can follow me on there. I might start posting eventually. Maybe I'll do some funny TikTok dances for the fucking teenage audience. I don't know what I'll do, but I'll do some hockey content maybe on there if I ever feel the need to. And yeah. Um, so yeah, Habs in the opening minute. Press is a good stop by Urson. Back the other way, Montembeau robs a, um, robs Morgan Frost on a two-on-one. Nice pass by, I want to say it was Owen Tippett to Morgan Frost. I don't know how uh, Montembeau stopped that, but he does. Very good save, save there. 
If I do dances, you'll show you'll show my you'll show your dick. You'll show my dick. No. If I do dances, you'll show your dick. Sounds it sounds like a good trade off to me. All right. Uh, Canadians press. They try to get something going. Uh, Armia is found by New Hook on a nice break. The shot is just wide though. The Habs really starting to break the game open. Habs press. Um, there's an air throw on one. Suzuki just isn't able to get all of the shot though. Suzuki then takes a hit from Sealer. Doesn't matter. Habs score. Juraj Savkovsky. Nice one-timer to the back of the net. He makes it 2-0 Habs. He's got both goals. Suzuki and Matheson on, with the assist on that goal. Nice pass by the captain to get that across. Good one-timer by Slaff. He buries it. Uh, Habs press. There's a flyer shot to get stopped. And we score. Salty, yeah, dude. Crisp one-timer by Slaff. Crispy, crispy. One T there for the uh, future A, I believe. Um, and like I said... Habs score again. Brendan Gallagher tips a shot from Kovacevic home. Harris with the second helper there. It's 3-0 all of a sudden. Within, I want to say, like a minute and a half, if that. Um, Flyers then call a timeout. They tried to, you know, kind of lighten the pressure, you know. I think it was a smart move. Uh, nice hit by Harry Pinar on the boards. And we score, ladies and gentlemen, almost two hours into the stream. I can finally do it. Yuri Sofkovsky with his first career NHL hat trick, the hats. It's always you and me. Yes, indeed it is, sons. It is always you and me. The Stan the Stanley Cunt Finals. I love that. Who's giving pity votes to Sons? Of course, Sons does in Luca. That's pretty funny. Um, Yuri Savkovsky, like I said, his first career National Hockey League hat trick. Caught on a break by Savard. That is two goals in less than 40 seconds for the Habs. It is 4-0 just like that. Um, yeah, I, as soon as I saw that that was Slaff scored, I fucking yelled. I jumped fucking fist bumping my daddy. That was huge. There's a TV timeout off a whistle. And we score again. Josh Anderson, of all people, gets his first, and I believe they said 17 goals. He is the reason there's no milk carton tonight. Um... Harrison Pearson get the assist. He kind of goes barreling in to the to the net. Nice uh nice chance there. Anderson puts it home and it's 5 nothing. Urson is chased from the net. Fedosov is in. He makes I believe his third uh, appearance in the National Hockey League. Uh second in relief too, funny enough. Yeah, Josh Anderson Islander killer, that is very true. Uh Habs got an immediate 2 on 1. There's a nice stop by Fedotov. And we score. Fedosov, Fedosov makes a couple good stops. Christian Dvorak back in the lineup. He gets someone from Harris. It's 6-0 Habs. Shot on the glove side. He can't stop it. And it's 6-0. Beauty of a goal for Christian Dvorak. Love to see him coming back in the lineup. And he makes it 6 nothing. Flyers get some pressure. A uh, couple chances. Good one for Farabee. Gets stopped. There's a rebound out in front. And that is off the post. Too close for comfort for the Canadians. And then we get a little bit of a scrum. So back the other way, uh, the Canadians get on a rush chance. Gallagher has a shot and he ends up sliding in. Fedosov kind of hits his head on the crossbar. Uh, everybody kind of finds a partner. No fights. We will get 4-on-4 four 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 as a result. The Miners to, I believe they said Struble and Farabee, I want to say, got the other Miner. Or got the Miner for the, uh, got the miner for the uh, Flyers. Yeah, uh, I mean, you know, it's just one of those, you know, the guy doesn't really mean to go into him, but the dude hits his head on the post. Thankfully, would stay in the game. Fedosov did look fine, thankfully. You know, he slides in, you know, he kind of got to, you know, just you know, give him a little something. So, yeah, nicely slap of the hat trick. Hat tricks for the Habs are hard to come by this, these days. That'll change soon. Oh, you know it, Habs Guru, dude. Dude, we're going to have Cole Caulfield getting hat tricks at least three of those a year soon. Zuki's going to be getting one soon. Uh, Slap is going to be doing those often. I think Lane Hudson, we're going to see a couple of hat tricks from him in his career, hopefully. Um, Kirby Doc will hopefully be doing that. Dude, we're going to see so many Canadians being able to get hat tricks. It's going to be scary. Um, and speaking of scary, how fast we're getting through the actual game recap now. Um, Flyers press. Suzuki nearly gets in on a 2-on-2. Two -two. Flyers press back. The 4-on-4 four -four means some looks for the Flyers. They just don't get much. Struble with seconds left. Nice hit on Konechny. And Monty ends up covering a shot at the horn. Flyers, uh, sorry, Habs lead the game 6-0. Shots are 22-21 for the Flyers, though, after the second period. 
Flyers get minor press, get a minor press early. Uh, there's a two on one stop by Monty. Habs press. They know they have the game one. They don't need to worry much. Uh, I will say this now, by the way. I do respect Coach Marty for what he does in this third period. The game's over. Slav has the hat trick. We don't have to embarrass them by putting the top line out there. This was a game where I want to say that top line got three or four shifts. I want to say it was they had a low amount of shifts. I think Slav finished with just under 16 minutes of ice time. Let me see. Um, sorry, guys. Sorry, guys. One second. Sorry, guys. One second. Um, where the fuck am I? <laughs> oh, yeah. I got to go here. Uh, let me see if the guy who usually does it posted the, um, wow, is it not here anymore? Is it? Oh, replays. Wow. Yeah. They've not, he's not been doing them. He's not been doing them for a while. Actually. I just realized that, but yeah, the, uh, the recaps, Harry, I finished the story. Sons, you have won your Stanley cup, my guy. You have won, or sorry. You've not won, you've won your Stanley cuck. St sorry. Stanley cunt as it's called. Um, Props to him, man. Props to him. Uh, props to you, sons. And uh, But yeah. Um, fuck, what was I saying? Yeah, uh, the top line got like four shifts in the third period. It was very much... The other lines get a little bit of spotlight. And the Flyers score. <laughs> classic MLS move letting our lines play. Exactly. Or classy. Not classic. Yeah, classy move. I agree, Habs Guru. Most, most head coaches, and I admit I would have liked if Marty did that, would have shifted the first line regularly. Let them get, you know, two, three more goals, you know. Let Caulfield get some. Let the points build. But I do respect that, and I love that that's a, that's a classy move. That'll get respect from other head coaches and GMs around the league. All right, you know, first you, you know, first line, you'll get a couple shifts still, but let those let those bottom three lines get shifted a lot more. I felt like as the period went on as well, I don't know if I was crazy or what, I felt like I was seeing Dvorak's line out a lot more as well. I felt like they were getting, like, every other shift. And honestly, I like that. I think they actually played well together. I think Dvorak had a good game. Pazetta was very noticeable in some aspects. I think that Harvey Pinard had some good chances. He had a couple good looks. Unfortunately, he didn't score. He still has just one on the year. But you know what? I, I've liked uh, that I like that fourth line tonight. I have no issues if that's the fourth line uh, against the Islanders on Thursday. However, again, with fight night being, you know, kind of probably happening on, on Thursday... I wouldn't mind the Canadians calling up maybe a guy like maybe a guy like a, J a John Parker Jones, you know, playing Pazetta, you know, maybe calling up one or two big boys, you know, from Laval. Would not mind that at all. I think that would be good to do. Um, depending, of course, if the Islanders, which I believe they did this against the Penguins, that's why they had so many reinforcements for both teams. But they let them know beforehand that um, that hey, look, we're gonna reinforce for the f hit on DPH or the fight with. DiPietro. Yeah, the Islanders game salty. Yeah, because of the Brennan Gallagher hit on Adam Pellick. I feel like the Islanders did that against the Penguins. That's why they both had like eight enforcers in that game. So I feel like the Islanders might do that with the Canadians, which I think that would be respectful. Um, and yeah. Sons, I don't know. I still have this inkling that Fight Night 2 is happening. I still... Which, by the way, Sons, are you willing to come, down, come on the stream on uh, Thursday? Not like C-U-M, but like C-O-U-M. Note to self, spell words properly. Earthquake, shut the fuck up. You know what, sons, maybe, you're, I don't think you're coming off. You know what, sons, I think Fight Night 2 is going to be fucking you and me, you piece of shit. I think it's going to be you and me, you fuck. Oh, fuck. No, but seriously, if you're down to come on, I mean, I just, I don't know, sons, I got this inkling that it, it's going to be Fight Night 2 in, 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 I mean, I, maybe not to the, that extent where it's like fucking like three guys on the bench by the end of the game. But I think we'll get a couple fights. I think we might get Gallagher going with somebody. Might see Pazetta drop the gloves. Maybe Anderson. I think we might see Savard. At least here, I, I will say this. If Brendan Gallagher wants to get it out of the way and go on with the game, he would ask to get the first shift and drop the gloves with someone like Matt Martin. I don't know if the Islanders' biggest tough guy is Matt Martin or if it's uh, fucking, I was going to say Leo Komarov. I'm back like five fucking years now, but you know, I don't, I don't know if it's Matt Martin or if it's someone else, but you know, if I'm Brendan Gallagher, I'd in warmups go over coach Marty. Hey, 
give me the first shift, go over to the honors. Hey, look, I don't, who's your toughest guy. I'll fight them, you know, let them, you know, I, I, you know, if he wants to do the respectable thing, he would do it. Cal Clutterbuck. All right. I'll drop the gloves. Like, uh, Anders Lee, really? I'll drop the gloves with Anders Lee or Cal Clutterbuck or whatever. Then like, just give me your toughest guy. I'll drop the gloves with him. Get the shit kicked out of me or whatever. Horvat can fight too. Really? So I don't think Horvat would take that fight though. Not, not, not that he wouldn't take that fight. I think that they, the others wouldn't want him to take that fight. I don't think. I think that if it comes down to it, they wouldn't mind him fighting really. But I don't think they would want him to take that fight against Gallagher. Just to, they don't want him to be the one to reinforce. I think they'd want one of those fourth line guys like Clutterbuck or Lee or Martin. But you know, fuck. I'll, but like you know, I'll take your toughest customer. If they want to get out of the way, if Gallagher wants to get out of the way, he would do that. If he wants to be a lingering thing all game where the Islanders maybe try and fucking end his career, he's not going to take the fight right away. Which, I honestly, for his health, he should take it right away. Okay, worst case scenario, you get a couple punches in the face, maybe you bleed. Aw, damn it. You bleed every other fucking game anyways, Brendan. Fucking take it. Like, come on. <laughs> you know? Dude, yes, Azik is... <laughs> Sons, I only caught that once you posted your second comment. I'm glad I didn't read that. But I mean, technically you could, dude. Like I said, I I think that if Gallagher didn't wanted it to last, wanted it to last the whole game, if he wanted to risk ending his own career, he's not gonna take that fight. I think he should though. I think he should just take that fight, wrap the draw, drop the gloves, let himself get pounded, maybe in more ways than one. You know, that's what I would do. Zach Nolan, how's it going, my good sir? Pleasure seeing you here, my guy. Thank you for coming by the stream. Jesus Christ, nine goals is murder league in Quebec. Yes, they are, Zach. We showed no mercy against the fucking Philadelphia Flyers tonight, man, dude. Uh, it was a second period burst. Uh, Yuri Savkovsky, I don't know if you saw, he had his first career hat trick. Um, Nick Suzuki had a grand total of one point tonight. <laughs> Mostly because the, 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 the first line got three shifts in the third. Uh, uh Mark, coach Marty decided, yeah, you guys, you guys, you've done enough. You don't need to do any more offense. Let the bottom three lines do it. Um, and yeah, I just wanted to pop it up by, yeah, I did see that Faggio came by and tell, told us that the jets apparently choked a lead, but they did beat the Preds in OT. I think it was that he said, Kyle Connor got the game winner. I like Kyle Connor props to him. Um, and yeah, fucking W for the jets. They've, they've long clinched by now, right? I'm pretty, yeah, no. Yeah. The. The Preds clinched with getting the one point in OT, right? And then yeah, Heli 46 saves. Jesus. <laughs> Heli 46 saves somehow allowed five goals. That's probably what we're talking about, isn't it? <laughs> it's funny. Hel those seem like the type of games Hellebuck has. It's it's like 23 save shutout and then saves 46 of 51 or <laughs> something like that. It's weird. That, that seems to be the type of game Hellebuck will play for some reason. It's almost like Carey Price. He'll make 15 phenomenal stretching saves no look saves the one that he should have is the one he lets in it's like okay <laughs> you know jets got out 22 to 5 in the second and gave up zero goals in that period let me guess they somehow let in goals to nothing <laughs> didn't they what the fuck though for real dude connor hellebuck if he does not win the vesna I don't know what the fuck is wrong with the NHL. NHL goalie leaders. Let me look this up. I don't want goalie victories. I just want goalie leaders. Who lead? Hellebuck has to be leading. Okay, obviously not games played. He is third though, which... Ugh. Save percentage. Yeah, for starters, he is he is far and away. Uh, well, not far and away. I mean, Joey, De Joey fucking Decord is like right there. I will say right now, boys, by the way, hot take. If Seattle's in the playoffs, Joey Decord is my vote for Vesna winner. I know, bit of a hot take, unironically. Uh, now goals against average. Who has the best goals against average for a starting goalie? Pure Kachets. Oh, okay, Joy, uh, that makes sense. Yeah, honestly, though, my, my vote is right now easily for Connor Hellebuck. I think Bobrovsky gets close, but yeah, it, my vote is easily for uh, for Connor Hellebuck. Varlamov has been carrying lately, really. Jets scored their first three goals on their first four shots, then waited until overtime to get the winner. Okay, so they almost pulled the uh, the Islanders, where they blew a three nothing lead, but they were able to hold on. You know, they kind of they pulled that good old ha. Huh? We made you think we were gonna choke, didn't you? Check money pucks, money pucks goalie analytics for goals saved. Oh, why do, why do I feel the need that I really don't want to? Uh, goalie was now goalie 
analytics. Money puck. All right. Um, <laughs> minimum one game played. Goal saved, but... Connor Hellebuck is operating at a 29.7 goal saved above expected. The worst is unfortunately Arvid Soderblom. Shout out uh, Jonas Norkvist. Or Jonas Kuberselis, sorry. Not Jonas Norkvist. He doesn't deserve that. What the fuck, though? Dude, and the estimated goals against for him is 165. Oh, okay. Well, okay, that's just... Okay, that's like... For, okay, that's for the season. I thought that was like how many goals he should have allowed by now. Okay. Wait, no, maybe it is because Sorokin is at a 158 and he's already allowed 161. I don't get how that works. But yeah, dude. Goal saved above... Okay, well, that's... um. Okay, well... Okay, give me minimum... Give me a minimum of like 27 games. Yeah, Connor Hellbuck has still saved 0 0.526 goals a game. That's the math here. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Zach. Yeah. But dude, like for real, that's fucking nuts, dude. I, I Connor Hellebuck, Connor Hellebuck's got my vote for the Vezina, dude. Where's Joey Decord on this list? He's stopping some point one. Shout out Sam Montebo, 18th and goal saved above expected, 3.6. Fucking go, Monty. I love you. Where's, um, all situations? Uh, where, do, where's the, uh, Percentage of unblocked shot attempts against on goal. Sam Urson. Actually, Urson uh, does not lead that. Where's the, uh, where's the Monty one? Where's the, where's the fucking, what's it, what's it called? <laughs> Why can't I think of the name? Why can't I think of the name of it? What's it called? The, um, not goals against better than expected. Um, wins above replacement. Maybe that's it. No. Where the fuck? What, what's it called again? I don't remember. Fuck it. I don't care what it's called. Jets or Panthers are getting the Jennings. Jets lead by two goals, but one extra game. Ooh, shit. All right. Firstly, Zach, thank you for coming by, man. Much appreciated. Thank you for hanging out for a little while. I got I to gotta comment on some more of your videos. I check them out often. They're pretty goddamn good still. I just got to comment a little more often. But uh, yeah, no, dude. That is, that is nuts. Jets lead by two goals with an extra game. Like, most people don't talk about the Jennings, but that is kind of fun, seeing that who allows the least amount of goals. Like, if, especially if you're into that defensive game of hockey, that can be kind of fun. But thank you, Zach, for coming by, man. If you guys want to go check out a really, really good Jets YouTube channel, Zach Nolan is your fucking boy. He is hilarious. If you guys want a funny Steve Dangle who isn't afraid to swear, Zach Nolan, check him out. The channel is Nolan Hockey Podcast. Fucking great. Love the boys over over there, Zach and Carter. Also, Peck City Hockey. Got to give them a shout-out as well. Check out the, all three of those guys. They're incredible. Love their content. And, uh, yeah, they're, uh, they're, they're some damn good Jets content creators. And some personal friends of the channel, yeah, I got to say as well. Uh, check those guys out. Uh, the Flyers, like I said, they scored. Ryan Paling made it 6-1 to off of a long shot. It just beats Montembeau. Sucks there's no shutout, but, oh, no, it's 6-1. to one. Yeah. Uh, Slav thinks about pushing for the four goal games. So he ends up getting Suzuki a nice chance. The Habs end up scoring after a nice press. Halfway through the third, Christian Dvorak doubles down Harvey Pinard with the lone goal. He takes the shot, gathers the rebound across the Dvorak into the wide open cage. Good to see Dvorak doubling down in his first game back. He makes it 7 to 1 for the Montreal Canadiens. By the way, guys, we have been streaming for two and a half hours. If you guys do not think my voice is ruined, Please, just please believe me. My voice hurts. Um, and also, uh, if you guys could, please hit that like button because I think I deserve it at this point. Again, I've been live for two and a half hours recapping the Montreal Canadiens game and talking with you lovely motherfucking people in the chat. Um, yeah, please again, please guys, hit that, hit that, uh, hit that like and subscribe button if you can, boys. Um, so it's seven to one. There's a puck off the glass. It sends us to our first commercial. Eleven minutes in, Habs end up scoring. There's a breakaway from Brendan Gallagher of all people, and he scores. Nice dig on Fedotov goes five hole there. Armia and Kovacevic. That is two goals in a in one thirteen of game time. We get Ole chance for the third time. They were loud as soon as it was like four nothing. They unleashed them again. I think near the end of the second, and then they unleashed them here. 
Bell Center was treating this like this is game seven of the first round and we're about to move on to play, uh, go into the second round. Genuinely, this felt like a playoff vibe just off the crowd at certain points, you know. Flyers end up pressing. The Habs just kind of kill time. They know they've won it. Trying to just kind of get through, go through the emotions. The top line was not getting shifted at all. Flyers end up scoring five minutes left. Ironically, I believe that was when. I believe that one was, that shift was, um, uh, I believe that shift was when. That goal was scored when the first line was out there, funny enough. Uh, Joel Farabee makes uh, makes it a 8-2 to two game off a scramble in front. And he just ends up poking it by Monty. That sucks. Habs couldn't close that one out. But, hey, you know what? It's 8-2. to two. Let the Flyers have a couple goals at this point. Just show them a little mercy. They then make it 8-3 to three with Paling's second of the night. That is tipped in. I, just, I literally just put that's tipped in Lamau because I knew it was a non-threat at this point. It sucks Monty ends up allowing the three goals, but whatever. Um... Or sorry, I'd say that 8-3, to three, not 9-3 to three yet. My favorite part of the game is when the Flyers decided to score three goals and it was a close third period. Exactly. Exactly. Um, Mr. B- uh, Mr. Beanus. By the way, welcome back, my guy. Yeah, I love that. It's like, okay, you know what? The game's 6-0, 7 7 nothing, whatever it was. It's like, hey, you know what? Let's 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 tie the third period three for three in goals. Let's let's say we tied the third period. We might have lost the third lost the second and barely lost the first. But we tied that fucking third period, you know. Like I think that's funny. And the Habs score in the final uh, within the final two minutes. Yoel Armia, his 17th of the year, a new career high for him. He gets the goal from Gallagher and Newhook. So Galley with a nice three point game. Two minutes left, make it nine to three Montreal. And at this point, I was kind of thinking, do the Canadians want to press to make it ten to three? Part of me was like, that'd be awesome. But another part of me was like. Please don't. I really don't want to have to edit my uh, my um, my capture. We showed you ginger-headed halves. We sh- oh, we showed you ginger-headed halves. Yes, you did, Mr. Venus. You really showed us. Tied, tied that third period, dude. We thought we had the game won, but just had to go and tie that third period up. <laughs> uh, the Flyers press for a fourth goal. Montembeau holds a puck with eight seconds left. That would do the game. Habs win 9-3 in regulation. The final shots end up being 31, 35-31 to 31 for the uh, Rangers. Okay, I'm actually not going to move because I'm about to scratch my bread. But uh, clutch save, honestly, dude, it was. Sons, I didn't see what Ben Ben Affleck's kid did. Let me, let me look at the Ben Affleck's kid. Violet, wait, what? Jennifer Garner and Ben Affleck's 15-year-old is going by a surprising new name. Jennifer Garner mourns the peaceful passing of her father. That's not what I came here for. My new name is... Wait, what? Okay. Um, seemingly debuted their na- new name at a memorial service for the late, late William Garner. Oh. Formerly known as Saf- Safarina Rose introduced themselves as Finn. Hello, my name is Finn Affleck. I almost said Finn Wolfhard. What? <laughs> Finn Affleck. Okay. So. So is it like. Is the kid trans? Like the fuck? Why the fuck would you introduce your new name in a fucking memorial service, dude? What the fuck? Dude, that's fucked up. I'm sorry. Who the fuck do you think you are? You're not fucking Ben fucking Affleck. You're fucking Ben Affleck's kid. You're not even known for your own fucking identity. Why you fuck? Fuck you, kid. Wait like a couple weeks. You fuck? She came out as trans at her grandpa's funeral, basically. Exactly, sons. It's like... It's or, uh, Technically, he came out because Finn usually a guy's name, but... It's like, uh, come, like, what the fuck? Dude, it's like, wait, a fucking couple weeks, motherfucker. Like, I, I don't care if I'm fucking, if your name is Finn. Wait a couple weeks. Like, that's fucking disrespectful. Fuck Finn. Fuck Finn Affleck. And fuck Finn Wolfhard as well. I think he's a bitch. And fuck Finn Wolfhard more than one way. <laughs> I'd fuck him the way Will couldn't in Stranger Things. All right, before I get myself any furtherly canceled, let's let's get to the game. 
Let's get to the Habs stats and let's get on out of here. Nick Suzuki leads the Canadians. Honestly, exactly, Mr. Venus. Uh, Suzuki leads the Canadians. 33 goals, 42 assists, 74 points. Goal Caulfield, 24 goals, 30 assists, 60 points. A, repair, a reminder, this is apparently a down year for him. A career high in points. Mike Matheson, 10 goals, 49 assists, 59 points. I'm not gay, but... I mean, I'm not gay, but either. But, uh... Yeah, uh, Yuri Slavkovsky, 19 goals, 29 assists, 48 points. Sean Monahab, 13 goals, 22 assists, 35 points when he was a Montreal Canadian. Alex Newhook, 13 goals, 18 assists, 31 points. Brendan Gallagher, 13 goals, 13 assists, 26 points. Jake Evans, 7 goals, 18 assists, 25 points. Yoel Armia, 17 goals, 7 assists, 24 points. Caden Gooley, who's unfortunately out for a little while. He did skate today, so thankfully he might be back sooner rather than later, but yeah. Harry's pretty gay. Unironically, I mean a little bit. Caden Gooley, though, 6 goals, 16 assists, 22 points. Hopefully he is back for at least a game before the end of the year. David Savard, 6 goals, 14 assists, 20 points. Josh Anderson, 9 goals, 10 assists, 19 points. Tanner Pearson, 5 goals, 8 assists, 13 points. Jordan Harris, 2 goals, 11, goal, two goals, 11 assists, six, 13 points. If Jordan Harris had 11 goals this year, I'd be flipping out. Justin Barron, 6 goals, 6 assists, 12 points. Michael Pozzetta, 3 goals, 9 assists, 12 points. Ah, sorry. Um... Yeah, Michael Pozzetta, uh, Johnny Kovacevic, 6 goals, 5 assists, 11 points. Arbor Jack, who's unfortunately the uh, out for the remainder of the year, 4 goals, 7 assists, 11 points. Bo uh, Bones, Matthews is my sunshine. Aren't you the dude who came by on fucking Rick's stream a couple weeks ago, my guy? Oh, God. Christian Vorak, 5 goals, 4 assists, 9 points. Raphael Herpenar with goal, 8 assists, 9 points. Joshua Wah, who is unfortunately out for the remainder of the year. Jesse Lunin, both have 4 goals, 4 assists, 8 points. Uh, Jane Struble. Oh, TBC. I'm retarded. I keep forgetting the profile picture. Oh my god, I do. I am dumb. Jesus Christ. Hey, TBC. Mr. Benus, are you from Canada? Yes, indeed. I am from Canada. What do you think this setup is all about? No, seriously, though. I, I am from Canada. Yes, indeed. Uh, I will say, uh, the province, I guess I, I guess that's fine to say. I am from, uh, somewhere within Quebec. Uh, or Quebec. Or Quebec, if you will. I'm from the, uh, province of Quebec. I have a little bit of a French accent when I decide to put it on. Um, yeah, I'm from Quebec and, uh, it's quite fun being where, uh, it's quite fun being here if you ask me. So yeah, <laughs> Quebec, exactly. Uh, Mr. Bean is Quebec. I'm from Quebec. Uh, Jordan, uh, Jaden Struble, two goals, five assists, seven points. Gustav Lundstrom, when he was a Canadian, had three goals and assists for four points. Mitchell Stevens, who's currently down in Laval, had two goals and assists for three points. Kirby Doc, who's unfortunately out for the remainder of the year. I'm from I'm from Key I'm from Quebec. I'm from Quebec. Yeah, exactly. Kirby Doc, who's unfortunately out for the remainder of the year. Sam Antebo or Caden Primo and Sam Antebo each have two assists. Brendan Chicknack, who's down in Laval, has one goal. Jake Allen, when he was a Canadian, had an assist. Caden Primo's got both the Canadian shutouts. Harry, I recommend you watch the next Leaf game. You can. Get, uh, teams are putting four guys on Matthews at once as well. Are they actually TVC? Bro, I got. I got. I will watch that. Do they, if they play tomorrow, I will 100% watch that. Let me look that up real quick. Also, Mr. Bean is dude. Me too. I. It's unfortunate. I live in Quebec, and I have not seen the. I was gonna say the Nordiques. I, technically, it's not true. I uh, technically that's not wrong. I haven't seen the Nordiques either, but I haven't seen the Canadians, man. Oh, I mean, I mean, technically TBC, uh, on Thursday, I can watch the start of the Devils and Leafs game just because they start half an hour before the uh, uh, Canadians and Islanders do. So, yeah, my lucky day, I get to watch Maple Leaf hockey. Oh, dude, yeah, too poor, man. Fucking too poor, dude. Like, genuinely, like, I get why the tickets are that expensive. You're seeing the next generation of the Habs slowly arising. But still, it's like, God damn it, this is expensive as shit. Exactly, TBC. Teams know you're going to force me in the puck. He's somehow scoring. I, I don't get how, but... Yeah, New Jersey did it. They're probably going to do it again next game. And, uh, yeah, Pittsburgh probably did a lot, too, so... Which is funny, because you would think, okay, they're putting four guys on Matthews. Just use everybody else to score, and, yeah. You're going to the final game of the regular season? Oh, shit, sons. Let's go. Hopefully... You know what? I'm going to say this is a funny compliment. Oh, wait, actually, no. They're not in the wild card. Fuck. Well, you know what? Hopefully, they're somehow in a position where they can't clinch third until that final game and you get to see them clinch the playoff spot live. I mean that in, like, the best way possible. <laughs> so, I guess, I mean, I hope every team that's in the wild card 
keeps winning, as do the Islanders, so they only... Cl I don't know how I mean... You know what I mean. I, I mean then, like, the best way possible. I want you to witness a little history, my friend. So, yeah. Um, and, yeah, Venus, it's a bucket list thing for me as well. At least see one game in the Bell Center uh, by the time I'm, like, 25. I'm 21 turning 22 this year, so three years, I think that's a decent, decent goal to set. Even if it's just a fucking... One of those, like, skills competitions that they do every year for the little all-star Habs thing. Or if it's for, um, not practice, but, like, a scrimmage. I'd love to see one of those live. Um, in terms of fights, though, Michael Pozzetta leads the Canadians with eight. Arbor jack has got five of those. Joshy e. Anderson's got four. Caden Gooley and Jonathan Kobus have each have two. Yoris um, Tanner Pearson, and Jane Struble each have a singular fight this year as well. Isles Girl 3 has seen more Habs games in the Bell Center than you. Yes, she has, unfortunately, sons. My dad went to a home Leafs, home Habs game in the Legion of Doom was strong in 96. Holy shit, Venus. That is, that sounds fucking awesome, dude. Dude, that is, that is actually fucking crazy. I can only imagine how, how loud the Habs were, despite the fact that John LeClaire was on the opposite team. Which also, that's kind of funny. He went to, he went to the... He went to a Habs and Flyers game, and you came here during a Habs and Flyers game. I think that's kind of fun. Matthews could have had 67 if Keith wasn't a douchey anus hat. <laughs> and benched Matthews for the whole game after he scored 66. Oof, TBC. That sucks. Well, I mean, you know what? Hey, I mean, he's got, what, four games left to hit 70? If I'm being honest, I think if I'm a Leafs fan, I'm hoping he doesn't score. And he, he, he gets four goals on number 82 to get that um, at that moment. Because that would be absolutely legendary. Like, I'm not a Leafs fan, obviously. You know this. But I will say, it'd be fucking awesome if Matthews hits a four-goal game in the last game of the year to hit 70 goals. That would be fun. A little bias for Legion of Doom's Grace Trier to never win a cup. I'm trying to think. I know Buffalo had one. I forgot if it was the French Connection is what they were called. I know the Legion of Doom is definitely up there, dude. I, I think John LeClaire technically has won a cup. But as an actual trio, yeah, they never won a cup. What was it again? It was uh, John LeClaire, left wing, Eric Lindros at center, Mikael Renberg at right wing, I want to say it was Mikael Renberg. I would, it would, but I, yeah, Renberg, yeah, thank you. Renberg was good for a fucking, it was so weird, dude, Mikael Renberg's career is like so weird. I'm, so, I'm assuming you've probably looked at it before, but this is a dude, uh, hockey DB, this is a dude who like, rookie year. Boom, point per game. He's fucking great with the uh, with the Flyers. They trade him with the Islanders, with the uh, Lightning, sorry, that first year. He's garbage. Second year, oh, he looks better. Goes to the Flyers, and he's okay. And he's out of the league by 2004. Like, I'm sorry, but you're out of the league by 32 after coming in at, like, 22 years old, something like that. Being a point per game player, basically. Keep in mind, he actually played 83 games and 82 points. Great playoff guy at first. How do you falter off that quickly after being with the Legion of Doom? Like, just, I don't get that. Like, to be fair, to be fair, I completely get why they got rid of fucking uh, Mikael Renberg. Because the motherfucker, they got four first round picks for the fucking dude. Like, I don't care. It, like, exactly. Shit was different back then. Much more physical, exactly. Like, Renberg could handle himself pretty damn well from what I remember. Lindros, of course, was just a fucking beast. By the way, uh, you're going to like this, actually, Mr. Benus. I'm playing uh, FHM. Uh, I'm doing a franchise mode with the Sharks. Well, you may not like that, but I drafted Lindros. Motherfucker already has won a Stanley Cup by year four. <laughs> He's won a Stanley Cup. He didn't win the Conn Smythe because, for some reason, Alexei Yashin decided to pop off in the playoffs. Um, Alexei Yashin pops off in the playoffs. Say that ten times fast. But, yeah. Harry, I'm still a noob. How does the Money in the Bank match work? So, the Money in the Bank Sons works in this sense. I'll explain to you like you're five. You get like six guys. It can be four. It can be eight. Usually it's six, though. You get six guys in a match. And you get the briefcase above the ring. You got to be the first one to pull the briefcase down. And you can cash in literally whenever you want, as long as there's a wrestling ring, it feels like, basically. You can cash in. It used to be on just the WWE or the World Championship. But you can cash in on any title you want. I think Dominic cashed in. Because I think Dominic held it. Or someone held it where they cashed in on like the US title. Or that was the Austin Theory. Austin Theory cashed in on the US title. So you can cash in on literally any title you want now. But yeah, basically, 
you get briefcase, you cash in whenever you want. That's why Priest was able to cash in without announcing it. You can't announce your cash in, but most people just kind of do the smart thing and just my opponent, dude's the dude the dude is the world champion. He's out. I'm gonna go cash out. I want to be a world champion. I kind of feel bad for the fires to be honest. The season was going great into the future franchise. TBC, that is true, man. Oh, sons, you need to know how many people. Yeah. So, yeah, you can have four people if you wanted. You can. Okay, you know how the contract works. Okay, I'm re stupid then. But, yeah, you can have six. You can have eight if you really want. I think they have eight-man ladder matches in 24. But, yeah, you you can have any amount. But, yeah, usually it's usually it's six. But, uh, yeah, TBC, got hit, getting hit with the fucking rape allegations. That... That's never too good for your morale as a team, and never too good for your your, your especially for it to be your sh fucking literal franchise goaltender. And, but yeah, like Mr. Bean has said, you guys are probably projected to be a top five, bottom five, bottom ten team. And it's like, hey, we're in the playoff race for a majority of the season. Yeah, we'll take that probably. Yeah, exactly. You, you losing Mr. Unspoken hurt the team on paper. Yeah, the mo the morale was the bigger hit. Exactly. TBC. It went from hey, you know what, Carter hurt. You know he's gonna be gone. I think they said from oh, no, it was a Dubé. They said mental health reasons. But I remember from like, hey, you know what? We have a chance to make the playoffs to, oh, our starting goalie might have done that. Oh, and, and we liked that dude. Yeah, you know, it's something like that. So I completely get that. Like you said, yeah, losing the morale was definitely the bigger blow. Definitely. But yeah, guys, uh, my voice is a little sore. And I got to be up, like I said, at 9 o'clock in the morning tomorrow. I got to be going to bed in like an hour probably, so... Yeah, but yeah, um, that is going to do it for today's stream. Thank you guys. Sam Mercer was doing great. Dude, he was. It sucks that you guys couldn't bring over Fedotov or acquire a goalie at the deadline. Because if you could have, Sam Mercer probably, you guys would probably have been in the playoffs now or much closer than you are. You probably would have only been one or two points out. Maybe even in the wild card right now. Who knows? But that sucks. Hey, bye, sons. Thank you for coming by, man. Much appreciated. Thank the rest of you guys as well for coming by too. Thank you all so much for watching. My name is Harris. Please do not forget to like, comment, subscribe, favorite, share, whatever that includes. But it's not limited to YouTube, Facebook, in, uh, X, Instagram, Tumblr, and everything else. My name is Harris. Subscribe to the Puff Club. Yeah, if you kept going at that place, he could have won the Vezina. Exactly. I just don't want the Isles in the playoffs. No hate zones, but the Isles are just so boring. They're going to get clapped around one anyways. Probably TBC. Hey, good night, man. Hey, Mr. Venus. Thank you, man. Much appreciated. Thank you for coming by, man. Thank you as a Flyers fan for coming in and not being toxic. Thank you for coming in and showing there are some good Flyers fans. Thank you, man. I really appreciate that. CTBC, hope to see you guys in the future. Again, guys, uh, thank you all so much for watching. Share on everything. Links in the description. Also, hey, TBC, slow your roll. Slow your roll, my guy. Slow your roll. <laughs> no, but seriously, though, it's all good, man. Fuck the Leafs. I'll say that in return. I try to be the one, the one respectable. See... This is what's going to make me like you, Mr. Venus. I try to be the one respectable fly Philly fan. Dude knows that he's a part of a fan base that is not well respected and the fucker owns up to it. I love that. Mr. Venus, you are uh, now my second favorite Flyers fan. I say second only because I don't think I can really dethrone the guy who I'm co-hosting a podcast with. Link in the description for the other podcast that I do. Um, just because that would probably cause problems. So, Yeah. But yeah, guys, again, that is going to do it for today's video. Link, subscription, all that good stuff. Thank you guys so much for watching. It's more fun. That exactly, Mr. Venus. It's more fun that way. Just acknowledge if you're a part of a bad fan base that, hey, it's fun. No way the luck. No way the luck. Oh, shit, Venus. Let's go. Oh, shit. Fuck. All right. Yeah, guys. Um, yeah, I get. I got to get out of here. My fucking voice. I got to get something to drink. I've got some bread in front of me that I'm going to eat. Again, you guys, that is going to do it. Thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Trace again, and I... I'm out. This has been great. Good night. Hey, good night, Venus, man. Good night, TBC, Suns, all you guys that came by. Thank you, guys. Um, oh, uh, my name is Harris again. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please not, uh, forget to like, comment, subscribe. Uh, subscribe, Junk Puff Club, the Heasy Clubs, Hubba, the Nation, Remember the Moth Squad, the Normal Concert Dreams, and the Reviews is much greatly appreciated. Links in the description. Check all those out down below as well. Um, yeah, my name is Harris again, and I am out. Go Habs, go. Always remember, no matter how bad we were last year, how pretty decent we are like this year, how much better we'll be like next year. Go Habs, go baby. Thank you guys for watching. My name is Price again, and I am out. Love you guys. See you guys. Bye guys. 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 Bye guys. Bye. Damn.